Hey everybody, this is Grant Henry from Stemage and Metroid Metal. Welcome to the first 2023 episode of the Gaming Outsider. It's our Game of the Year celebration. Once again, Scott, Zach, CB, and Alyssa asked me to join them as we discuss the most important news stories from the past 12 months, our predictions for the coming year, and our personal favorite titles from the past year. We'll wrap things up with the Go's overall top picks of the year, as well as the communities. This episode is flexing some muscles, so let's air fry these Brussels. This is the Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to the Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community, which can be found at thegamingoutsider.com. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are a whole bevy of friends. First off, Mr. Zach Parkerson. There are, there's a lot of people here. There is a lot of people. Also, Chris Berensmeyer. Hello, friends. And Miss Alyssa White. I am surrounded by handsome men. Help me. <laughs> this is, is this the first time that all four of us have been on a show at one time? I feel like we haven't been able to do that before. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't last know. I think, year we were. Yeah, we did it. We've done it once before. Yeah. Did we? Okay. Okay. Go shut my mouth. But uh, we have another person joining us as well because this is our annual game of the year episode. And as has been tradition for years now, we always love to welcome back our good friend, and contributor to the Gaming Outsider podcast by way of music, Mr. Grant Henry. Grant, how you doing, man? I'm great. You can refer to me as Math Man for this episode. Uh, <laughs> Do- Math Man. Oh man, I'm having I'm having flashbacks to that three two one contact show. Yeah, I knew you were old enough to get that one. Yeah, Scott Clark. <laughs> Math Man. Math Man. Math man, man yeah. I love that show. Annual baby. Let's do this. Oh, I don't know how many it's... years it's been, but every time I search Google Drive for Gaming Outsider, more and more documents start showing up. So oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while, I guess, at this point. Got to start organizing those documents a little bit, have them cataloged a little bit more. It's a little gross right now. I should probably do that. And then I can, yeah. you know, I don't know, tie them all together it, somehow. It's better to do it now than do it later. Trust me, it makes it oh. a lot easier. So uh, this is our first episode of the year, 2023. And we're kicking off the new year by having our annual Game of the Year discussion. We'll be recapping gaming in last year, talk about the most memorable news stories, make some predictions for the coming year, and discuss our personal and combined games of the year. But before we get to that, we always got to talk about what we've been getting, what we've been catching up on. Grant, what have you been playing, sir? Oh man, uh, I um, finished High on Life. Oh, okay, um, cool. I actually started it and really didn't like it. I got to a certain point where I was just getting talked at so much. I felt like I was being, it, I felt like I was being bullied, and I was like, you know, I think I'm done with this game. I think I'm good. And then I just kept reading about how much of a Metroidvania it actually was, and I was like, you know what? Let's let's just dive in and turn down the verbosity slider and give it a shot. And I finished it. I thought it had, it had some pretty cool moments. Still a little talky, uh, but it had some uh, voice cameos that I appreciated hearing and thought it was it was it was cool. There's there's a good game in there. It's not quite my style of humor but there's some stuff going on um i agree so. i felt like it was a little too much and i if if i didn't have so many other games that i wanted to be playing over christmas break i probably would have dove into it a little bit more but i'm with you i felt like the game was just constantly chastising me in one way or the other yeah it's but a- the gameplay was fun yeah it plays um, well it's a it's a, and it's a beautiful game um, also zach are you gonna are you gonna take this correction on him or do you want me to well that it's a gear gated shooter that, yeah, yeah. yeah Ooh, I knew yeah. that too. I even, oh gosh, oh, what a fail. I even, I think I texted Zach at some point earlier this year and was like, what's that genre you use or call it or whatever? Yeah, just so I wouldn't make the mistake again. So, damn it. I was waiting for you to jump in there, man. I thought I'd just, well, you know, uh, just let him have his moment before yeah. I chastise Met- him. Metroid's in my blood. So. Adventure. That's true. Metroid yeah. is in his blood, and he had just been bullied by High on Life, so I didn't really want to just go right at him, you know? <laughs> I don't want to cry just yet in this episode. He's just he's still chill shock. <laughs> well, yeah, I've heard that game is pretty short, too. It's only like six or seven hours. Is that true? Not long. Not long. Yeah. I decided, I, not the kind of game I think I want to go back in, in 100% or anything, but it, I, I, right. I really pushed through the last part of it, and I think it was about, about five and a half hours, something like that, so pretty short. I sat through about 20 minutes of that movie. Oh, Timmy the, and the uh, T-Rex? Yeah, <laughs> oh. um, just, and then it went to like a commercial break, and I was like not going to sit around and watch fake commercials, and you know, like to watch. I don't know, but wow, that was uh, that was a really young Paul Walker and Denise Richards. Oh, he's such a baby in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that before, actually. Otherwise, I might have watched a little more too. There's actually four movies in that game. Get out. Yeah, there are four films. The the movie posters show up in the living room. The more you play it, uh, I think I think like Vampire Hookers is one of them. 
uh, <laughs> bl- blood, blood something, blood harvest. I think it's called just a bunch of schlock from the eighties that they licensed. Uh, nice. Plus Tammy and the T-Rex. Anyway, my <laughs> life was pretty cool. Any other games that you've been uh, catching up on? Uh, I started Somerville. Um, I love like I never did try it. It was sort of on my list of shame for the year. I wanted to kind of at least start it because I love that environmental storytelling, you know, dialogueless kind of game if it's done mm-hmm. well. And it's pretty neat. I don't look. It, it controls kind of clunky. I find myself sort of smashing around into walls and trying to figure yeah. out. Yeah, I had that it's, issue it's a, too. I played it yeah. as well. Is it did still glitchy? It? I I did finish it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm on Xbox One X, and it's um, it's been a while since it came out. Maybe they fixed bugs. I haven't run into any bugs. It's just kind of smushy to play. And I, I agree and the with stealth the smushy. Is a little, stealth is a little, uh, not the greatest, but it's very pretty. And the sound is great. Music's great. So I'll, I'll see if I can I might, might does it, that one. Does it hurt you as much that you can't pet the dog as it did me? Because I and wanted to pet the dog so badly. You can in certain in certain scenes. I think you can. You I can think if, the, if the dog's not on a path. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I think you what? can actually because I've petted him twice so far. I petted no! him in the house. Oh no! I, I so know. I petted him by a bench. Uh. So. So oh, Alyssa, no. Alyssa, sir. Yeah. Oh, Al- Alyssa just clicked reinstall. Yeah. Like, oh, in the wah, middle wah. of this. <laughs> no, I feel bad. I didn't pet the poor doggy. Oh, the dog just wanted your love, and you said, "Nah, I'm good." I tried. I tried to pet it, and it wouldn't let me. Liz is now it having a, a panic attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hopefully the hopefully wherever you're trying to adopt a cat is not listening to this podcast. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna run. <laughs> this is just they need to patch in that pet mechanic. They do. They to, whenever whatever you're doing, you're running from creatures. Doesn't matter. Stop and pet the dog. It better let you. you it's I mean? it's one of those features like text size where you're like you know everybody wants it. Just put it in there. I know. Yep. Like, who actively doesn't want it? I mean, I, I don't really care personally, but I'm yeah. not, like, vehemently against it or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, no one wants, like, a, a no on the, uh, you know, can you pet the dog.com. Right. Or, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. Right. Absolutely not. Isn't it a Twitter handle, too? Like, can you it's pet the dog? It's something like, I don't know actually yeah, know if it's a yeah. site, but it's something. Yeah. Gotcha. Any others, or are you good? Uh, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm I'm poking around at different things, but um, I just installed. A, I got myself a little. I'll have to send you a picture of it. I got myself one of those little clam, uh, gosh, expandable um, Bluetooth controllers for your phone that grab the phone from the sides. You know, talk oh, yeah, about because yeah. you have one. I think backbone. Um, yes, the backbone. And I installed it, the, the Dolphin emulator. There's some old WiiWare stuff I wanted to check out. Nice. Um, I really recently listened to the. Castlevania Rebirth soundtrack again recently, which is super good. They put out Konami did these Rebirth games, and uh, man, it runs great on my phone. And I haven't nice. picked. I bought one of those for myself for Christmas, so I'm getting ready to jam through some WiiWare stuff on my. On Very my phone cool. Once I get it all well, working, so. CB, I promise this is the last time I will mention it for a while, but I did 100% complete Vampire Survivors. That's all I'll say about <laughs> it. And I did uh, jump back into uh, Sonic Frontiers. Uh, I know that Kevin will be very excited to hear that, and I, that game is just so much fun to play. So it's, it's great. Just, it's great. It's just fun. Yep. I, I just I I love how everything is just right out there. It's like playing. Uh, I I know we compared it to like a 3D Mario game, but like I feel like in in like Mario Odyssey, which I've been dabbling in a little bit too, just to have something to play. You know, when I'm on the go, um, I I feel like 3D Mario games are like you have one goal in mind when once you're in a level and you do that and then you back out and you have to like go back into the level and get a new quest or whatever but sonic just like opens everything up to you and just says go do whatever you want like in whatever order you want you see some rails you're probably going to be able to get to them pretty easily nothing ever seems I- insanely gated at least for a while i don't know it's just it's just pure bliss and I know it's not perfect. I know it's got it's got some wrinkles, but I, I, can you imagine what they're going to do with the sequel? <laughs> it's just right. going to be. It, it could be pretty intense. Yeah, very excited about that. Zach, what about you? Well, if I I played some of Evil West. Finally. Oh, you did. Yeah, because I because I wrapped up Sonic Frontier, so I you know, I had to move on to something, and uh, played like an hour or two, maybe. I like it's linear. Boy, that's nice. Right? Uh <laughs> I didn't realize it was such a non-shooter though. It's it's definitely a melee game. 
then mm-hmm. happens to have a gun in it. Uh, but but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's fun. The story is uh, nonsense so far, but the appreciable kind of nonsense, some real schlock, as it were. Oh, that continues all the way through, my friend. I I believe it. Uh, no, but I, yeah, I'm having fun. I like that you can like uh, knock the the. I guess they're not vampires. The demons into environmental objects pretty easily, which is a uh, it's a lot of fun. I think they're they're considered vampires, aren't they? Don't they call them ticks? Well, the, yeah, the van- which uh, why do they do that? But I love I, that. You don't like that? I think that's so funny. I'm surprised oh, that hasn't so, happened in a movie so, yet. It's like in a uh, Days Gone where they just kept insisting on calling the zombies freakers. I'm like, freakers why? Is oh so yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean that that sounds dumb. I think ticks is actually kind of clever. Uh, but no, because most of the game you're fighting like those little like demon things, because or at least where I'm at, because the vampires can't go out in the sun. Oh, I, I just I just lumped them all together and call. I wasn't oh. even thinking about it. Well, in the sun. They, well, you know you got to pay attention because in the in the story, Scott, they're they're, <laughs> yeah. they're interrogating <laughs> vampires by throwing them in the sun and stuff. You know, that's true. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but uh, yeah. which was cool. But yeah, no, I'm ha- I'm having a, a decent amount of fun with it. Uh. It's not like blowing me away or anything, but it's it's exactly what I wanted it to be. Just like a linear game, you know. I assume it'll be like nine or ten hours. Just get yeah. in, have some fun, get out, get out of my life. That's all I want. Pretty much. I'm sure. There's I know a, you, you, you're anti skill trees. How are you feeling say, about the? Well, I don't. I I don't. I have not interacted with a skill tree yet. So it's not terrible. It's yeah. not like oh, you're going to get a plus fifteen percent or something. I mean. There are some like that, but it's not. It, it's very much feels like at least half of it are things that matter. You know what I mean? So, sure. um, and then there are other there are other weapon trees and things like that too. But uh, again, all that stuff kind of seems to actually matter and things that you actually use. So. I'll say I'm playing it on uh, my original Xbox One from 2013, uh-huh. and I can't imagine it's the same on Series X. But it's pretty funny because there'll, there'll just be like straight up no textures on the side of the train. And they just like and they just won't load in, so you're like, okay, this is obviously how they optimize it for this console. But uh, you know, that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me, but it is it's pretty funny. Nonetheless. Huh. Yeah, I didn't notice that on, on mine. So. But the frame rate's stable, so I assume they just sacrificed everything else to make sure the game ran. Which is fine. Nice. But then Anything the cuts oh, the cutscenes though, because they're like obviously captured, they uh-huh. look beautiful. And then you go to the game and it looks like a you know, a three sixty game all of a sudden somehow. <laughs> it's really funny but uh yeah no that's it just evil west for me so. okay and cb how about you man uh i've been playing a fair amount of marvel snap yeah you have yeah i think are you the only one that's been playing that zach did you you you, you played a little bit but i don't feel like i've heard you talk about it no I, yeah i play it pretty much every day oh yeah okay i mean yeah. what else are you in- i don't know what else there is to talk about yes i've played more marvel snap you know it's not like yeah. it's introducing new mechanics every week or anything no, I mean the complaint I've heard about that game though is that you know every time a new season or whatever they call them, like you you just basically lose all your progress and start all over from scratch. Is that a valid complaint? I, I don't play it, so I, I, can't re- I th- couldn't tell you on that one. I think it no. knocks you down three tiers. So if you're so every ten levels is a new tier. So if you're like if you're in the level seventy bracket, you would get knocked down to the level forty bracket for the new season. So you gotcha. lose all your progress, but yeah, they do. You do lose some, and then I think if you're, you never get below twenty. So even if you're at thirty, I think it only knocks you down to twenty. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's so like start. It's been amusing. It's something to pass time with. Nice. It's great. Great Anything for an ambulance. Else? I mean, uh, I've been playing <laughs> playing with your uh, your Steam Deck. Oh yeah. I dropped that off at uh, on Thursday for you. What have you been playing on it? Um, I played more of the uh, the desktop. Just wanted to. Oh, it's like an hour and a half long. I know, but uh, yeah, I, I the fr- yesterday was the first day I've really cracked into it because I was at work and something like that is great for being at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, beyond that, no, I, I I really haven't touched it's. It is uh, it's been it's been a week still, but luckily things at work are slowing down finally, so I'm gotcha. hoping to ramp up with a few things. Sure. Have you guys and, tried? Uh, I apologize. I wanted to ask. Have you guys tried that that um uh that Valve game they made? It's like is it a Portal game they made? Yeah, that's Steam. Aperture that, Desk that, Job. Aperture yeah. Desk. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's talking about. It is. Oh, that's that's what you're talking. Phenomenal. Oh, that's desk, that's yeah. what the game's called. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. I hear it's. I hear it's great. I heard you can oh, play I loved on, it. 
Because you can play it on desktop too. Uh, you can. I just want to try it to experience it because the writing is always so good in those games. But uh, how do you play it on desktop with all? Because I feel like the thing is a tech demo for the Steam Deck and like the touch pads and the speaking. Oh, I don't know. The... Maybe I mean, I, someone said mapping. you can play it on desktop, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. But it it just makes me really sad because it I it really makes me want more just Portal and Half Life geared things, and they oh, will yeah. never yeah. show up. So. Ah, sad. Well, last but not least, Miss Alyssa, what have you been playing? I just started playing Kentucky Route Zero, which I know this game has been out for several years now, but it's on Game Pass, and I'm really digging it so far. Again, not very far in. I'm just still in the first act. But it's really weird, but in the way, like, the, it's weird in the way I like it. Like, it feels like a mixture of Twilight Zone and Twin Peaks and okay. X-Files, stuff like that. And there is a dog in this game who I feel really sorry for because the dog is very old and skinny, but you can give the dog treats in this game and you can also name the dog one of two names. I named yep. her Baloo. She wears That's a straw hat. Nice. She's old. I feel sorry for her, but I'm like, you're a good dog. I tell her she's a good dog every chance I get. But I'm curious about that game. It, it's I'm very interesting. interesting. It's different. I will tell you it that. Is, yeah. I'm excited to keep going because now I'm hooked. I need to know how this story is going to progress because I'm like, this is already weird. I need to see how it gets weirder. Oh, oh, believe me. It's, <laughs> it gets really bizarre. See, that I'm, intrigues me though. I just, I'm, oh yeah. Me too. I'm a big fan of that game. I'm a big fan of that game. And I also named the dog Blue. So nice. Uh, good choice. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Alyssa? Or were you ready to move on? That's pretty much the only new thing I've been playing. Okay, well, let's get into it. We're going to go ahead now and jump into the section we normally reserve for video game news. We're still going to do news, but we're going to kind of skip over news from the week in our news section. Here we go. So a lot happened in 2022, but I want to ask you guys... What do you think, in your opinion, was the most important news story, announcement, or release that happened in the last 12 months? We're going to start with you, Alyssa. What do you think was the most relevant or important news story that we talked about over the year? Well, I think one of the biggest is Microsoft trying to acquire Activision Blizzard. It's not fully finished yet, but mm -hmm. just the news. Like, obviously upset Sony. There's been a bunch of stuff going on lawsuits trying to be filed all this kind of stuff yeah that was that was actually mine as well i'm going to scramble and come up with another one oh, too but sorry for stealing it. no 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 that's why i put myself I'm it's pretty my sure fault it's i put myself last, all of so. ours because it was mine too but yeah. luckily i have i'm two sorry backups. for stealing everyone's answer no i i i kind of thought it might have been a common thread because it's yeah. really hard to come up with something that is that megaton in terms of news and it's still going on oh yeah uh, sure. you know not only that, but just all the drama that's associated with it, with all the the suits and and then all the the drama that's going on with Activision Blizzard anyway. You know, oh, there's yeah, just the so place. many things going on at that, and it's just it's going to be really interesting to see how the dust settles in 2023. Um, but yeah, uh, that was that was going to be mine, and I obviously sound like it was going to be CB's as well. CB, what's uh, what's your backup? Ah, well, it's funny because I completely forgot this happened. And it makes me really hate Sony that much more right now. <laughs> okay. Um, the fact that Sony bought Bungie. Oh, yeah. Okay. I forgot that like, yeah. too we this year. We don't want you to do exclusives, but we're going to buy Bungie, which has Destiny. Probably. <laughs> but there are no exclusives going from Bungie, though. True, but they could pull something off like that. Like, if yeah. they... Because uh, is, is Bungie still making Destiny, correct? It, right. Well, they are, yeah. They so have they, the they have they have the weirdest deal in history where they basically just get to run and operate independently and do whatever they want, and they get two point six billion dollars on top of it. Yeah, but I mean now now Sony could literally go, oh, we're gonna make Bungie, I mean, we're gonna make Destiny three, and it's gonna be a Sony exclusive. No, I would say they can't. It's in their contract. They can't do that. Oh, it's that's why it's it the, it must only be because of they want their live service expertise. That's the only reason this acquisition makes any sense. That could be. Hmm. And, so, and probably to make a Destiny TV show or something. I could see oh, that. I didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, That's probably a good call. But yeah, they also uh, 
they bought Haven and um oh god, what was the other part of the deal? Um is it Blue yeah, Point or is that last year? Uh uh repeat buy- repeat dot gg for like the esports. It was like yeah. part of the weird acquisition, but Nixus, I think they bought Nixus this year, right? Or was that last year as well? They're buying a lot of stuff. For but, a company that says acquisitions are bad for the industry, they sure don't hesitate to buy stuff. I know. Yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm so sick of just the back and forth over both of them because they both buy up things and it's basically just yeah. one side finger pointing all the time. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. bad people. That's my favorite Full part. Full circle hypocrisy. The favorite part of the Activision acquisition is just a constant like, you know, Xbox going like yeah, Call of Duty. People don't even like Call of Duty. I don't even know why we're buying this. <laughs> you know, and, and Sony going like, yeah, you know, we we could ne- we can't even make shooters honestly over a PlayStation. We don't even know how, so we have to have Call of Duty. It's <laughs> they're just like constantly dragging on themselves. It's hilarious. It's really weird that that Xbox bought the Crash Bandicoot company, and Sony bought the Halo company. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh yeah, <laughs> it hurts <laughs> so weird. Your yeah. brain, you. Because Sony watch... can't, ma- Sony can't make a shooter, and Xbox can't make a platformer, so they're just like exchanging. You know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because weird. Now, 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 Spyro and Crash Bandicoot are Xbox properties. Mm-hmm. Well, if it gets final, I'm, that's why I'm waiting for that uh, Xbox platforming All Stars game where they all team up with Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Dude, if that happens, you're gonna automate. Even though it's not like one of your predictions, that's just gonna automatically get you like three <laughs> points next year. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, I'm dreaming it. Yeah. Zach, what about you? Most important story. Well, so it was a little bit uh, piggyback off of CBs because my answer was just uh, Sony's constant digging of its own grave. Yeah. Uh, which which I know is a multiple news stories, but it feel like it's just been such a theme of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, whether whether that I mean, that PlayStation Plus launch that has nothing you know, like the the premium service where you can pay sixty dollars a month to play demos. <laughs> <laughs> um, and their weird refusal to put any of their like in their retro catalog, they're not adding anything, even though they own most of it. Mm. Right. It's truly... not to mention they raise the prices of hardware. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. raise the prices of hardware. Like these people, the, Jim Ryan's on the war path to be just the worst guy to have at a PlayStation. He's really pulling a Don Matrick over there. He's just dedicated yeah. <laughs> to burying this company in the earth. And, and they're and the weird way they just like. They seem to have no understanding of their fan base anymore because they're, they're like, people don't want to play old games. Who wants to play the original Gran Turismo? You know, it looks like a joke on a screen. And you're like, it's weird because the retro gaming scene has taken over the world. But yeah, I guess nobody cares about them, huh? Yeah. Uh, or, or or the weird way they're like, yeah, we're going to announce 10 live service games in the next five years. I know, we know gamers can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, PlayStation <laughs> fans are just dying for live service games. It's just it, it. So I guess my biggest news story is just Jim Ryan. And he just, he just won't shut up. <laughs> Jim Ryan is your news story. He just won't stop. <laughs> and the way he like flew to Brussels to try to like mess with the Xbox deal too. It's just, he's just a goofy dude over there. That's it. Well, Grant, last one, sir. What do you think was the most important news story of the year? Well, maybe not the most uh, important, but a pretty big one. GTA 6 leaking. I thought was pretty. Oh funny. yeah, because yeah. that oh, yeah. that's st- that stuff just doesn't happen really like quite like that. I mean, we we live in a leaky world now. Uh, but that was just a one. I, I Need for Speed leaked uh, a year or so ago. Uh, Need for Speed Unbound, like an early prototype, which was kind of strange to see because they're also kind of locked. They're locked down over there too. But yeah, that was just wild. Uh, and it, it sort of they it sort of went away, and people have just you know they know something's coming, and it was. But I don't know. That was just a really. That was a higher profile leak I had not expected. So and you're right. I, yeah, I, mean, I think it's it was mostly... funny because I feel like when it happened, everyone was talking so apocalyptic, like, oh my God, what does this mean, what does this mean for Rockstar? But I mean, based on the our collective's kind of, oh yeah, that did happen. I don't think it's going to matter at all. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. I, I, think, I think the bigger part of that story is just how little the populace understands how game development works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because they're like, "Oh, this is going to be terrible, guys." That game is like three years from coming out. You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I'm willing to bet every single thing that was leaked was probably scrapped. Like they were just like, "Yeah, let's just drum up some random interest." Hopefully, not my... the big booty on that leading lady. I think you need that. That'll help your sales. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, like I said, we're going to kind of just skip over anything that happened this week, just for the sake of time. 
Uh, but I, we're going to go on to our predictions. This is one of my favorite parts of the show because we take a look back at last year's episode where we each made predictions about what was going to happen in 2022 and uh, and just kind of see how well we did. And we're going to start with Grant. Uh, how do you want to do this, Grant? Do you want to do you want to read yours off, or do you want me to read it and everybody re- react? I don't remember how well, we did. Well, we could it last all year. we could we could all each read our own, maybe. What do you think? All right, yeah. uh, go for it. Th- the three, and then we'll go down the list, and then we could, and then we'll you know decide how we do the points, and then start over again with new ones, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, my first prediction was that Frog Fractions Three would be announced in 2022. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty reasonable one. I don't know what Frog Fractions boy is doing, but he's not. He didn't certainly didn't announce now, uh, Frog Fractions three. I, so I will issue a rebuttal. It could have been. We don't know. You, you are absolutely right. It may <laughs> be just a tucked, it, it's tucked in the middle of a game. It yeah. might. It might be in Vampire Survivor somewhere. We just don't know. <laughs> You're absolutely right. It could be the DLC no. that came out a couple weeks ago. Who knows? Right. You know? um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe let's check back next year and see if I can retroactively give myself some points. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll allow it, man. I'll allow yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like if Halo would have gotten their crap together this year, this could have happened. But I did. Pre- I tried. I predicted that Halo Battle Royale mode would happen within the Infinite Suite. Turns out nothing happened. Like, no, yeah, like I had Halo to look is, that up because I couldn't honestly could not remember if it happened. So yeah, nothing. I, I mean, Halo just nothing's. I don't know what's going on, but. That didn't happen. No. Uh, which we, is too bad. We learned they're not competent enough to pull off split screen. That was kind of a fun oh thing my to learn. Gosh. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, did, they did add Forge, right? I'm not crazy. Is Forge that in there? Happened. Okay. Forge happened. Mm-hmm. Yes. So they said we can't make the game, but we'll let you make the game instead. I guess. Yep. <laughs> Has anyone tried it? Like we all have it. <laughs> no. no. Game no. I like I liked Halo Infinite a lot, but no. Yeah, it's just they 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 did not carry their momentum at all. They didn't even try. Some might say it was the number two best game of last year. <laughs> Some might. <laughs> you guys. Um, and my was third really pre- our number two? It was yeah. our number, yeah. Yeah, it was our number two. Dude, that campaign was great. You can't deny that. Oh, I'm not yeah. arguing. I'm just, I'm surprised. I, I think it, you know, that one came down to so many of us played it, which is like the, which is the rub doing this kind of thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. If everybody plays a game and likes it, it's going to get five times the amount of i don't know so or likes it a good bit right if it's if it's sort right. of up on everyone's list a little bit then it, it can yeah. it can steal the, the blue ribbon anyway third third one i know a new mario game will be out in 2022 i meant a proper mario game i didn't mean strikers i didn't mean Rabbids. Rabbids. Did, did something else come out i don't know mario we, yeah it was the uh it was the, the rabbit's the, game the, the x-com rabbit's game, game yeah. yeah rabbit's game came out uh still need to play that but no so I'm I'm just I'm zero for three. I, I feel like I've at least squeezed out a quarter point each year, but I got nothing this time, guys. So <laughs> that's all right, man. On. So it's okay. I, I will I will join you at the bottom of that list here in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's about swinging for the fences. Yeah, anyway. Alyssa, what were your predictions? My first prediction was a softball, but that was Bayonetta three gets a release date, which it did, and it was also released this year. wasn't that yeah. wasn't that much of a softball, you know? The game. Uh, uh, it it was, had the record for most delayed game in history, right? I mean, Until yeah, it was very game. delayed. Yeah. It's... So, I got one point. <laughs> yeah? But Ooh. the next one I struck out, struck out on. Naughty Dog will announce a brand new IP that is not Uncharted or Last of Us. They just released The Last of Us Part 1 <laughs> Again. remaster. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. Oh. I do need to issue a quick correction. Bayonetta 3, not the most delayed game in history. It had... And it went the longest without anybody talking about it. It went like 1170 days. Yeah. So that's, mm, that's, I don't right. want to, I want the record straight, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it came I, close with the Naughty Dog prediction, though, because didn't they say they didn't announce what it was, but they announced that they were going to be doing a new property? Oh, they, I Did mean, they? they like to claim that chapter, I mean, Last of Us Part One is a new property. I don't, I don't remember think. them saying anything about a new property. I don't either. Yeah. I know they're, I know they're making factions. And then the report is the other game is Last of Us Part 3. Oh, okay. Maybe but, I misread it. I could have swore they said they were doing something. No, no, no. You're right. It was it was something, a new game in a beloved franchise, which clearly is going to be Last of Us. Oh, right? yeah, because I think it was a job posting, right, that you might be talking about? Right. Oh, it, was yeah. Probably, yeah. it was probably for factions. Oh, mm. is that what it was? Okay. Presumably. I mean, it could be for Last of Us 3. I'm going to laugh when they pull a 180 and you're like, oh, it's going to be Last of Us 3. They're like, no, it's a new Uncharted game. Jack and Dexter 4. <laughs> Finally, the unanswered questions are coming at you. What if they called it Charted? Charted. Okay. <laughs> right. Brand new IP. Spin off. No, no. It's Nathan Charted. Drake goes to the moon. 
They finally they do <laughs> Uncarded versus The Fast of Us. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That, how did you come up with that on the fly that well, quickly? That's well, impressive. Un, Uncarded has been around. That's been a joke for a while, but yeah. Oh, has the, it? The Fast of Us just made sense. Also, Zach is just like a literary genius, so. Oh, That's no. true. All right. That's true. <laughs> Some of them. Uh, wait, do we do Alyssa's third prediction? I, I, got, nope. I got to talk about my third one. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. We totally derailed you there. Did get... Hideo Kojima will finally stop teasing us and will give us clips of his new project, which he did show clips of Death Stranding 2 or Cutie yeah. Booty Delivery Duty 2. Yes. Right. <laughs> at the Game Awards. So I I feel safe giving myself a point for that. Yeah. Yeah. And that one's yeah. not even as that one. Was, there's no softball involved with that. Nobody knows what Kojima's up to. So I got two yeah. out of three. I'm I'm actually surprised it was Death Stranding too. I was expecting it yeah. to be whatever that those weird clips that we were saw. I don't know. It was like we saw like a game over screen that had like Hideo a Hideo Kojima game. Mm. Remember that there was some sort. There was something that was some kind of quote unquote leak. Well, that happened. He's still working on that mystery Xbox exclusive yeah. project, which could have been that. Who knows? But oh, yeah. yeah. Would she have gotten the points when he earlier this year announced his podcast coming out? Because that would have been a new project. <laughs> yes. We saw a clip oh, of him talking. Yeah, it's a project. <laughs> yeah. It is. If it were if, if it were a video podcast, then and he shows uh, us clips, then I'm sure yeah, that would have counted. Yeah. Was, I mean, yeah, it was a was, clip of him. It was, right. which is what the podcast was. So you know, he, he gave us a tease. Oh, you mean what they announced at a gaming awards <laughs> thing yeah. that uh, he's going to be doing a podcast? Like right. And then I think later in that same show, they're like, and here's a trailer for Black Adam. Oh, jeez. Yeah. had nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. So two out of three ain't bad there, Alyssa. Not yeah. too bad. That's nuts. You did pretty well. Uh, my predictions, uh, I said that there was going to be a trilogy collection of Final Fantasy thirteen remakes. Womp womp. Uh, that did not happen. It would have been awesome I, if it would have happened. I, I thought that prediction. was going to be a, I thought that was a really solid random prediction. I was, I was kind of bummed that one didn't happen. But uh, I also said that Beyond Good and Evil Two will officially be canceled. That that has not officially happened, but we still haven't heard a damn thing about that game. No. Nope. Uh, and then you got this one right. <laughs> Ten I points. got this one right. <laughs> Microsoft acquires Activision, and I actually went back and listened to the episode to get these. And Zach was quoted to say, "It's going to be so dumb." If that happens. <laughs> actually, actually, <laughs> hang on. Let me tell you, it's dumb. Hang on. Yeah. You can't yeah, it have hasn't that. happened they, yet. It has not happened. Yeah, oh, true. You know it what, hasn't CB, happened yet. CB, hasn't... We, we knew this is exactly what you were going to say, so we had a private discussion. We agreed he gets the point. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. dicks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter anyway. It's only one. So Alyssa still got me. So it's kind of yeah, a, I'm pretty sure a she mood won. point. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to be hard. What's that? Did you have any reason to just, did you just guess this? Did you just guess, you thought Activision might be in a, in a good place to get scooped up and just get, and just decided Microsoft would be the one to do it? He, he and yeah, I, I mean, that, yeah. this is before uh, 2022 started, he and I had been talking like, what's going to be Microsoft's next big acquisition? Yeah. We had, we had opposing viewpoints on who it was going to be. Interesting. <laughs> and Interesting. Like, I feel like whenever I do these predictions, I always do two that are, that I feel pretty safe are going to happen or, you know, they're, they're not like just like a total softball, but they're, you know, random enough, but they're still plausible. And then I do a third one that is just like a swing for the fences kind of thing. And it's funny that my swing for the fences one is the one that actually came right this mm -hmm. year. Right. So the, the prediction that was one of the largest corporate acquisitions in history was yeah. the one that's right. But yeah. canceling the game that doesn't even have its director anymore, apparently not a safe bet. No. Nope. Right. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. I don't know what the uh, the video game version of any given Sunday <laughs> for that phrase, but any given any given industry. I don't know, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So I got one. It was a pretty big one. Right? It was like, hey. well, one man, is one. Like, what do we like? If we, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I should get a point and a half or something. That's ridiculous. Like, no, we, no, no, no. Point. I will give it's you a your... point. It's... A point and a quarter. A point and a no, quarter. No, that's yeah. Uh, that's fine. All Whatever. right. All right, CB, what were your predictions last you get year? 70 oh. billion points. <laughs> okay, every are, dollar. Are we playing whose line is it anyways now? 
Um, okay, so for me, it was two more gaming watches will be announced. One will be released in 2022, and at least one you will c- be Metroid. You <laughs> could tell what we all got in the mail right before that episode recorded. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. I was excited. Well, I mean, that was the second one. I mean, I I did acquire two war gaming watches that year. Dude, but I mean, well, th- those things are cool. I liked them a lot. Sad. Yeah. They were cool. I wish they would have continued down the path. Number I'm, two. I'm actually, I really expected the Metroid one. Yeah, like, that I just seemed like did a too. no-brainer. It made sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, Parasite Eve gets the Resident Evil remake treatment. Oh, that was just, I wish that was it just had. a wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'm I'm really swinging for the fence this year. I oh. Mean, um, I guess is outrageous. Chrono Trigger 2 announced. Oh, double points offered. That's so funny. So we <laughs> yeah. just said if that happens, we get double. He gets double points. Yeah. Is you know, here's good. the thing, CB. I almost want to give you like a quarter of a point or a half a point because I don't know if you guys played Chained Echoes, but Chained Echoes feels like a spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger. Hmm. I'm not saying we're gonna give you the points, but no, I'm just I saying. <laughs> I understand, but it has yeah, you're outrageous. You're out of pocket. I'm telling you, if you like <sighs> Chrono Trigger, go play some Chained Echoes. Cause sure, I like yeah, I, it's good. I, I, actually, I'm sorry, but if I was going to argue for a quarter point on anyone, it would be the Parasite Eve one with the spiritual successor to that being made. What was it talking Pierce? about? I don't know, yeah. There's, um, there's that one game that they just announced where basically like the name seems like it would be Parasite oh, Eve. Oh, the, the, the Symbiogenesis game? The end of oh, yeah. 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 Yes. That would be the one I would argue the quarter point for. But wasn't we, that just like, like, uh, what do you call it? Blockchain stuff? Isn't that yeah, all that was? Yeah, yeah. But it is funny how we all got excited. We all thought a new Parasite Eve was coming. Yep. yep. Why? why uh, and I, don't, I don't think any of us thought of CB's prediction when, we, no. when that came out. We were no, like, "Oh, uh, CB was right." No. Otherwise, we would have tried to play it off like it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. And lastly, Zach. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Sony San Diego is going to announce a new Uncharted game starring Nate's daughter. That, seemed, that seems... Nailed I it mean, easy. it seems very plausible. Yeah, I thought so, too. That could uh, still happen this year. It very well could. Blue Point Games is actually working on Bloodborne 2. My conspiracy theory uh, has not come to fruition yet, but I swear, guys, it's coming. You'll see. <laughs> I think day. it is, too. Makes sense. One day. And then the year will end with Xbox console sales beating PlayStations. That didn't happen. We actually don't Did know it? because they don't release their sales numbers. Did they yeah, not? Yeah, it they beat they beat them for a few months and they were they outsold them on Black Friday, which is right. pretty important. Yeah. Now in Japan, uh, they did at one point this uh, year on multiple Two, multiple yeah. weeks. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So you know what, Zach? I feel like giving you a half a point for almost getting there. I think that they they went up seven percent in market share Xbox. That's yeah, do they they're making they're they're game, gaining a lot of steam. Game Pass is not messing around. Wait, they're getting steam. <laughs> that would that would be the that be the cinch right? That would be the victory lap. All of, a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like, oh yeah, you're you didn't know the Steam Deck is actually just a portable for the Xbox. Yeah, oh, you, you get Game Pass on that bad boy. Uh, well, you, yeah, you, you, you can, can actually. Yeah, with your cloud streaming, you can. Uh, but I'll, I'll gracefully accept CB's half point because I think Xbox has some impressive work. I mean, most of the marketing came from PlayStation not being able to shut up, but uh, it it, man, it really helped Xbox get some sales. Yeah, and I think Game Pass sold a lot as well. Yeah, it I, is I, like I, if you're if you're getting your kid a Christmas present and you're looking at these two consoles and you know about Game Pass, how do you not just buy that? And they knocked the fifty bucks. They knocked the S fifty bucks off for a month and a half. I mean, it was two fifty oh, right. for an Xbox. Like a, like yep. a new one with some some Game Pass attached to it with Fortnite and well, you know what I mean. Like it's just really it's a. I think that PlayStation is still considered the cooler console, especially with kids. Why it's hideous and looking? Think, it's so ugly. It's the ugliest it's thing so I've ugly. ever seen. <laughs> it's I'm not so sure ugly. every day I look at, it, I get mad. Ugly. Oh, there's a spaceship. <laughs> it looks like a. It looks like a like a uh, like a generation one like a like a 2005 sharper image. Uh, yeah, uh, air purifier <laughs> in my grandma's attic. It stopped working after a week. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, just that's the very, thing. that's very specific, but that's exactly right. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, my I have mine laying down, so it doesn't. It's not quite the eyesore, but I just feel like it looks like an Oreo cookie, like a backwards Oreo cookie. <laughs> my, Did, mine is also laying down, and I love that yeah. the disc drive is on the bottom. Right. Yeah. I know it <laughs> makes no sense. 
By the yeah. way, did you finally take yours out of the uh, the cubby hole so you stopped cooking it? <laughs> no, I mean it's hardly ever on. So <laughs> I have to get I have to get like uh, that that shelf on rollers. Like whenever I'm playing it, I just kind of pull it out. You just so and it breathe. just like sticks out like a like a giant console holding tongue on the front of my and then it, and then it, entertainment. And then it breaks off the tongue, the whole tongue. You know, oh yeah, that would be thing. fantastic. Just a, just a mess. Yeah, just a mess. All right, so that was I, I guess Alyssa is the clear winner. For yep. 2022, yeah, full <laughs> points. Which man, when the when the Microsoft acquisition news dropped halfway through this year, I was like, "Well, I just wrapped up predictions for this year." Lo and behold, I did not. I did not. <laughs> so maybe I got to be a little bit less uh, bold. Although no, because the bold ones are the my bold pick is yeah, the one that actually was. made it. That's, Go nuts. that's part of the reason why I'm I'm going full banana sandwich this year. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. I like that. You, That's fun. Are you just carrying over your three into the next year? You know, no, just like, I'm going even dude, bigger. I really thought about that because I'm like, these are both, these are all still outrageous. I mean, I got, you know, Xbox beating PlayStation, I guess, almost looks inevitable as current trajectory, but these other two guesses are, uh, you know, they're not, they're not done deals. Nintendo buys Google. Grr. Oh my god! What? I, I, I think it'd be the other way around. I'm just that's what I'm st- swinging for the fence. I'm just I'm get the you get the money together. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into our predictions for 2023. What does everybody think is going to happen in this new year? We're going to start with Alyssa this time around. What do you got? Okay. This is one that's just purely because I want it to happen, but Chrono Trigger remake announced. Oh boy, we can't get <laughs> oh, remake. Two, two, yeah. two years in a row, Chrono Trigger makes the prediction yeah, list. Who, <laughs> who knew? I, that, I feel like it's that's due. Now, does that now would that if it gets like ported to Nintendo Switch Online or something, does that count? Or are you talking like a, an all out remake? Good question. I was talking about an all out remake. Okay. Good like answer. a two, like a two D HD thing, like Live Alive. Um, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd go with that, or even like the Final Fantasy VII remastered. Oh or, boy, not oh. remastered, but yeah, that treatment. But I think I would prefer the two D HD personally. Well, yeah. I've never gotten to play Chrono Trigger, so I don't know. I just oh. want to play it. That's why I'm <laughs> guessing this. That is still owned by because it was a Square Soft game at the time, right? Is that a Square Enix property now? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's no way that's going to come to Nintendo Switch Online. Because it was the Chrono Trigger HD remake on the DS. You're right. There was a DS one. There's so also... Yeah, I guess there is a hope in that, it, I guess. Square Enix does... They're, they're a complete mercenary. They could very well put a port on Nintendo Switch Online. Who knows? Yeah. They and they're charging everything. 80 bucks or whatever for the <laughs> And it's Final selling Fantasy. out. It sells out in seconds. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I I like that pick, Alyssa, because I again like I would love to replay that game again. Although I could just replay it, you know, normally. But yeah, no, I'd like to play it for the first time. It. That's a great. It's a. I mean, I I know that's an obvious <laughs> response to that, but yes, it's a great game. It's a <laughs> solid JRPG. What else? Okay, I'm gonna go big and say Sony acquires Square Enix. Wow. All right, I'm gonna hang myself if that happens. Bold. Please don't do that. That's that would be the worst. I will news. be. I'll be so sad, Zach. Oh my god. And I will. That be. I will curse be, Sony for the rest of my life if that happens. Be <laughs> so depressing <laughs> if that happens. It's it's funny because I, I I had originally and I actually took this off my list just so we're clear. But I said Sony was going to fully acquire Konami. Oh, okay. so interesting. Yeah. But so that has been scratched from my list for something even bigger. Oh. Oh. So. Okay, I feel like if they did that, that would be the most hypocritical move on the. <laughs> but it feels appropriate decade. for Sony right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They yeah. love making everybody mad. It's true. <laughs> uh, what's your third one? My third one's pretty much just kind of a softball guess, but Game Pass increases in price by five dollars this year. All right. Are, are you specifically saying five dollars, or are you going to go four ninety nine? Four ninety nine. We'll go four ninety nine. I mean, oh, no, 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 don't say four ninety nine because it's in fourteen ninety nine right now. Nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be nineteen ninety eight. So say, say, if, is CB trying to trick you. I think I'm bad at math. <laughs> I'd be so, easily tricked by so that. Ni- so nineteen. So you're saying they're going to be at nineteen ninety nine? Yes. Okay. 
All right. All right. That's reasonable. Are you think, trying to trick me with math totally over here? Happen. You know, it's funny because they definitely need to, right, to, to make Game Pass, Game Pass profitable. But they're on such this trajectory right now, you think you'd almost want to wait to the last minute to pull the trigger. As yeah. much as you say that it's not profitable, I actually sat down and did the math one day. It, it It's plenty profitable. Well, but then you add in the budgets of their first party games, and it's, that subtracts pretty heavily. True, but Microsoft also if, has incredibly deep pockets. You say if they ever put any first party games out, that is. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. All right, that was Alyssa's prediction. Zach, you are up, sir. Oh boy. Well, speaking of Xbox first party, uh, my first prediction: Xbox first party titles will have more nominations uh, than Sony first party titles at the Game Awards. I like that. I like Xbox it too. Party, like, bold. Xbox first party. Yes. So games. their own studios will have more nominations than Sony's own studios. Hopefully and they this can is, put some games out. I was say, this is the year we know Spider-Man 2 is coming, but yeah, I have a... I think this is the year Xbox has got to deliver on first party, man. But we, but we do know that Starfield is also coming. That's true, but you also yep. got to think about... But think of the reaction that game journalists had to the Starfield already. They're like, oh, it just looks like Skyrim in space. Yeah, I also don't feel like that's going to be a nomination for game awards either. I don't feel like those kinds of games are. Are they not? Even if, I mean, was Skyrim on any game of the year list for game? I mean, I guess game awards didn't exist back then, but sure, I'm sure it won a bunch. Yes, yeah. yes, it okay. won many well, awards. So did Oblivion. Okay, well yeah, then, never I, mind. I still think, yeah. But anyway, that's that's my uh, my first one. Uh, second one, I'm doubling down. I'm saying San Diego's. Uncharted game, <laughs> sorry, Nate's daughter, is going to be announced this year. So I'm going to okay. just copy and paste that one from last year's list onto next year's list is what you're saying. It should, that should make your job a little easy. I just can't let that one go because I think I still think Blue Point's making Bloodborne 2, don't get me wrong, but I think the I think the Uncharted game is closer to reality. All right. That's going to be a thing. Uh, and then my last prediction is a little more of a softball, uh, that Final Fantasy VII is going to be Square Enix's big push this year. It's going to have multiple games and the announcement of an animation project. Oh, that'd be Ooh. cool. Multiple hmm. games and an animation project. Yes, yeah, I think they're going to go all in on Final Fantasy VII this year with Rebirth coming up. Final Fantasy VII Advent Children 2.5 Remix HD? <laughs> that, Dude, yes. I, I, mean, I wanted to like that so bad. <laughs> Are you talking about Crisis Core Advent you're talking about the movie Evan Children? You don't like the movie? Yeah. 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 Oh, I like that movie. That's I love that fun. movie. I need to yeah. go rewatch it because I, I remember watching it when I was younger when it first came out because I just loved Final Fantasy VII and I was like, there's no answers given in this story at all. I don't know. It looked pretty. Yeah, it did it, look pretty. Uh, but I've got that on iTunes. I need to go rewatch those, that. Those see. fight scenes are pretty cool. That's why they that's the are very it. cool. It's in 4K now. Like You can get a 4K version of that movie. <laughs> Hell yeah, you can. All right, man. Those are your three ones. I am really intrigued to hear what CB has to offer Ooh, after listening. Here we go. He's, <laughs> you He's ready. built it up. Uh, first off, number one, this is my softball. I will be going to E3. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. that's my softball. Um, I mean, I mean that's not okay. really industry related, right? No, or? that's not industry related. It is for me. <laughs> I hope you have a backup because I think you need a. I think you need another one. Fine, Sony acquires Konami. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, I, that's fine. So you know what? It's just I, 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 I will require a half a point if I wind up going to E3. How, why are you not going to go to E3? I don't understand. I, I, yeah, what's going to stop you? I don't know. It seems you got every last year. You know what? Every single other year that I've actually tried to go to E3 physically in person, something has prevented me from going. I'm sure, they, they, yeah, the building might burn down this year. Who knows? <laughs> again, like I said, is it, Omicron flaring up again? <laughs> who knows? Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so number one, Sony acquires Konami. Okay. Okay. Number okay. two, Resident Evil Code Veronica gets the remaster treatment, like full remaster, like Resident Evil Two, full. Resident Evil Three, okay. full remake. Okay. What full announced remake. or released or An announced? Okay. Because I, I feel that that's like the bastard child of the Resident Evil franchise. Everybody yeah. forgets about it and just pushes it aside. I would ordinarily say that that's a softball, but then I can't remember the, the Resident Evil producer this year was like, well, because somebody asked about Code Veronica, and he was like, it's just not really a priority for us in the in the Resident Evil slate, which is an insane thing to say. 
because that obviously that makes more sense than remaking Resident Evil Four by a country mile. Yeah. Well, the fact that they're mm. they're already talking about doing five after four, and I'm like, I mean, four why? is like it's like it's so loved. I feel like that's a bigger, yeah. a better decision. No, that's that's why why Code, Code Veronica that's why, is fairly that's... loved in the Resident Evil oh, fan base. I know. I know four is more beloved. I'm also saying it's more playable. It is, but I just feel it's like make, I feel like there people would be quicker to pick up a remake of four than Code Veronica. No doubt. Yes, yeah, it will. It'll make it hella cash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I swear if they next. make Leon less of a perv, I'll be so disappointed. Okay, less of a what? Perv. perv. He's always flirting oh. with every girl in that game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those those are my first two. Here's here's where I go. All right, here we go. Full full crazy. Okay, Jim Ryan pulls a Reggie, leaves Sony. And goes to work for Microsoft. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I don't know if Microsoft would take him. But... <laughs> I, hang on, with with the tr- like, because Z- I like all the time Zach's here. Like Jim Ryan is apparently just determined to like crucify himself as a martyr for PlayStation and just yeah, keeps was... making dumber and dumber statements. So I would. I feel even that even he's funnier if he went. Even funnier if he went and went to work for Pizza Hut like Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> That's more. I would believe that more than okay. I would believe. Well, I, I feel Jim Microsoft. Ryan. Jim Ryan is either going is going to leave PlayStation and no, wind yeah, up yeah. working for a competitor. All right, I like it. I so, feel like that's the one that we offer double points if it happens, right? No, like, th- that is, Jim Ryan leaving does not feel that outlandish to me. But no, but I but said going to for Microsoft. a rival also, company also goes to a rival company. So I don't know. no, you said specifically Microsoft. Specifically Microsoft. But I would. I would also feel that maybe because I don't think Nintendo would touch him with a ten foot pole. Oh, no this way. feels much more <laughs> likely than Chrono Trigger too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, man. So Sony likes to just dig in its heels and just be like, "No, yeah. it's definitely bold." Uh, man, leave Sony and work for Microsoft. I I can't see it. I, I, I would love to see that happen. And then Phil Spencer's like, "Yeah, we'll hire in," and they make him like work in the mail room. <laughs> Uh, uh, for the same salary, like <laughs> for an executive salary, but he's got to sort mail. He's, he's got no power. That'd be great. He's bringing mail to Phil Spencer. Oh, you just every video of Phil Spencer making announcement. People like always pay attention to his uh, shelving in the background, and like every video is just Jim Ryan polishing stuff on the shelf, <laughs> bringing him coffee. <laughs> oh, One I lump or two, that. sir. Uh, it's crazy. All right, so I got three predictions as well, and I'm going to preface my predictions by saying I feel really bad because I prepared these predictions two days ago. I was all prepped and ready to go, and I was listening to a podcast today, and one of the podcasts I listened to literally picked two of the same things that I did. Um, so this is I know this, this episode is going to come out well after that podcast. It's going to sound like I'm copying, but I swear... I had these two down before I listened to that. I literally listened to that podcast today. So uh, these were my ideas. I did not steal these from anybody. But uh, my first one, which I feel is a little bold, is that Valve in 2023 is going to offer a subscription service akin to Game Pass. Hmm. I think so it'll be what? something that will Seven be. Seven games. It, it, w- sure. It doesn't. I mean, they could, they could get away with 20, honestly. Um, I think that they're going to do something like that where you can pay like your 10 bucks or 15 bucks a month or whatever and get a slew of rotating games uh, that you can play at any time. I feel like I'm kind of surprised that hasn't happened yet, actually. So I'm going to. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My second one, I'm going to predict that PSVR 2 is going to flop hard. It's going to get a price decrease, but it's going to already be too late. I think that that, that uh, price point on that is going to turn way too many people away, especially considering you have to have it tethered to a console. Um, and the you know the other options are right there. I think you're, yeah, Argue- I think you're correct. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I think I'm actually still surprised we don't have a price, considering it's supposed to release this month. I thought it was $550. Yeah, I thought they, I thought yeah. Thought yeah they we have a price. price. Oh. That's uh, what I'm talking about. That's why it's going to flop. I, I have not gotten any pre-order details about that thing because yeah, they've given us a price. They just haven't told us where you can. I don't even think. Well, you get no, it, you, you there get is it a directly from them. They're not doing retailers first. They're doing that whole uh, have to order from Sony first, and then they're opening up well, retailers. Yeah, I'm sure it'll sell out through them, right? Any, <laughs> yeah. any yeah. electronic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, my last one, I actually kind of piggybacked on Grant's, one of Grant's picks from last year. How dare you? I know that he said that he was uh, going to predict that there was going to be a, uh, you know, a Mario game announced in 20, or was it announced Coming or you said released, I said released in 2022, yeah. right? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of bouncing off of that one a little bit, but I'm going to get really specific. And I think this is my swing for the fences one. Uh, I think that we will see a commercial and or trailer for the next Mario game in the theater in front of the new Mario movie. Mm. Oh, that's cool. interesting. It's good. I want, yeah. it that's fun. What kind of Mario game do you think it will be? Honestly, uh, it will, it, it'll be like a mainline like 3D Mario type game. I I think it'll be Mario Odyssey like 2. Well, that, yeah, that's a mainline yeah, Mario yeah. game. I know, but specifically, I think that's going to be the title. I think it should really give us what we want and just make Galaxy 3. I was literally just going to say that. <laughs> that's uh, that's the good stuff. I, I think Galaxy 2 might be one of the best Mario games I've ever played. Yeah. yeah. Like, it is so dang good, and I mm-hmm. really wish that they had added... I wish they would add that one to the 3D Mario All-Stars collection or let me just buy that one on Switch because that game... I need to replay that game. I, I worked so hard to get all the stars in that thing. That was a, that was a tough, tough game. But yeah, it was enjoyable. awesome. So, yeah, those are my three picks. Uh, what do you guys think? Yes, no, maybe so. All of them. No, I think they're all good. You're on a roll from last year. You're just gonna. I think VR two is a the, the VR two flopping flopping. I think is a lock almost. Oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. I I think so as well. What, what, I don't even. How do you s- measure I that? Don't, because I don't see yeah, any you, enthusiasm for it at all. I think you need to decide how you measure it so we know how to judge it next year. Well, and see, like, you know me. I love VR. And the fact that, yeah. like, I have so little information on this thing mm-hmm. because there hasn't really been much. Jim Ryan, he's putting it out to die. He can't trust that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, have have we actually got, like, a confirmed, like, this is, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we have a confirmed this is what it looks like. God, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's five fifty, and then isn't they're doing like a Moss Book One and Two thing right for it? Yeah, you uh, can't play with, your old PSVR games on it. It's no. with Call well, of uh, it's with Call of the Mountain because it releases yeah, the Horizon. Well. Yeah, because PSVR Two releases the same day as Call of the Mountain. Do you think so? So we need to know how to measure it, right? If they have a price drop in like the first six months, would that be a flop? Or that's a good that, that's that's a pretty miserable. Ooh. See, you think so, I mean, or? it would have to be a price drop of at least a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think because like, well, because this is a company that's confident enough to raise prices. I think yeah. if there's a, like, a <laughs> even, I think if there's a fifty dollar price drop in the first six months, I think that would be okay. measured as, as a bit I, of an. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to help you out here, Scott. You know, all I, right. just, I just think in the world of today's modern consumer electronics, if any at, price drop at all in the first six at, months would be at five hundred and fifty dollars, and this thing has less tech specs than the Oculus. What again? Quest and the buy. The, so the buy-in is a thousand and fifty, right? Because you need a PS4 yeah. or mm-hmm. PS5. Yeah, PS5, yeah. So that's that's insane. And that's just with one game. That's a thousand fifty dollars to play one game. And you can't you play Half Life Alex on it. And that was going to be my next question. Do you guys think that we could see a Half Life Alex on the PS? Well, if we get no. into my predictions, then I can we can talk a little more about that. Oh, oh okay. Because yeah, that is go. that's my first prediction is Half Life Alex comes to PSVR two next year. Oh, ah, okay. All right. This year, look at that. Right. This year, there's a lot of PSVR games coming. I'm just looking up here. It looks like there's like I don't know what is this twenty or so that'll be out in the launch window. But a lot yeah. of them are like um, you know remakes and ports and stuff right right and here's yeah. the thing i'm with cb i like vr i don't love it as much as he does I, i'm not going to put my head in a vr helmet for four hours at a time or anything like that but i i enjoy it but not a thousand dollars enjoy it or not even five five fifty enjoy it <laughs> Just, right you know what i mean that's yep. I, I i struggled to pay 500 for my ps5 much yeah. less a peripheral for the, the ps5 that i yeah, i don't know so my my biggest problem is it's still wired. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Oh man, I forgot that. That's insane. It's just they just mm-hmm. released a dongle for the PC that lets you play the Quest wirelessly, like an official dongle that su- that supports the protocol to do wireless without yeah, a router. You can you could do it you before do this, then too. You could. That's... I know, but but now that but there is an actual like a 
a stick that sticks in a USB drive that could be the same thing for PlayStation, but for, for whatever reason, they're sticking with the wires. I mean, I think the resolution is pretty high on that thing. You should just have a choice to be able to do that, I think. Anyway, right. it's, it's yeah. too bad. But um, mm. yeah, but it won't matter because Half Life Alex is coming to the PSVR too. Well, uh, yeah, the, well, flop avoided. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> uh, that would be the way to do it. Maybe that's what they're banking on. It's like, yeah. oh, this thing's going to sell just for Half Life Alex. I, uh, I, the, I, I had this idea whenever they put out uh, Portal Collection on Switch, and I'm like, this is interesting. What is this? What is this dipping? Because they did that before. Orange Box came to Xbox and yeah. PlayStation. And I was like, well, maybe they'll, maybe Sony can work out something. Um, maybe not, but we'll see. Uh, uh, prediction number two: Game Pass comes to Switch. Oh okay. my god! Yeah, please. Let's just I mean, let's just go. Let's let's, let's do just it. finally get right, that CB? over. Right? Yeah. What's what's yeah. that? So let's finally get it. Over. We've been talking about that. I feel like for years. I know. Let's finally do it. I know. Let's do it. Uh, and then the other last one, I don't know whether this is a softball or hard, hard ball or what kind of ball this is, but no Metroid in 2023, no Prime <laughs> 4, no Prime Collection. We don't see any Metroid next year, this year. No Ooh. Metroid at all. At all. What a sad prediction. Well, for a game come, I know. I, I, I'm just giving up. I have no idea what's happening. Um, <laughs> but no release. I mean, maybe we'll see a trailer, but no game this year. I feel like no this, is a point you, this is a point you would be happy to lose. I really right, want to lose. Got, I really want no you, points for this. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, because that means more retro. Yeah. Or negative points. So, to be clear, this is not. Uh, you know, we could see a trailer for something. We could see some kind of announcement, but you're talking. There's no actual release. No release this year. They've been so. Okay. They've been doing these like six month window announcements. Um, you know, That's like true. by the time they put out something, it's except for Zelda. It's it's pretty much it's been out within a few months, and I just don't think we're gonna see. I mean, it's possible we could see something over the summer but my my prediction is that we just don't see any any metro which this year. which is sad because after our desert island episode available now on patreon i really really want to play the metro prime collection man like i oh, gotta, yeah. gotta get in on this it's it's such a black mark on my gaming history yep um truth i, I want to back up just for a second grant because i want to play off your second one real quick okay I know because where you're this, going with this no this literally just hit me like a ton of bricks what if the 10 year deal that was offered to Nintendo and PlayStation for Call of Duty was Call of Duty will be bundled into Game Pass? Oh, interesting. So you'd have to have Game Pass on the systems to be able to play it? Yeah. So that's how <laughs> Game Pass gets to Switch. It's like, oh, yeah, you'll have Call of Duty, but it's available through Game Pass on the Switch well, I mean, and the PlayStation. So many Switch games are already streamed. It doesn't seem that outlandish. But. That's why maybe yeah. like Nintendo's like, yeah, we like the 10 year deal because it's more games that we don't have to yeah. develop on our system. And Sony's just like, no, we don't want it. Right. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it'd be great. That is not where I thought you were going with that. I thought you were going to bring up Reggie and Phil sitting next to each other no. at the Game Awards. But I, like, it just hit me. I'm like, wow, wouldn't that be a hell of a segue to get the like the 10 year deal that they offered Nintendo? But it wasn't just Call of Duty, it was Call of Duty plus Game Pass. Hmm. hmm. That'd be cool, man. Do you to do it? Call of Duty, getting on Game Pass. My God. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. if, like, they, if they acquire that, that's what Phil Spencer said. Any first party things that we own go yep. straight to Game Pass. Well, free. Yeah. Di Diablo 4, too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, what? Oh, you're right. That's Blizzard. Well, yeah. You know what? Oh. I, bet, I bet that's probably, mm. that probably goes back. <laughs> so, contracts years ago for Diablo 4, first yeah. part, like coming out everywhere. They're not going to. Well, but oh, so, they can still do it on Game Pass, though. It just it has to. Yeah, be it'll be free content. on yeah. Game Pass. Like there's, um, yeah. my, my uh, MLB the Show 2022 was free on Game Pass, but you had to buy it on PlayStation. Yeah, which was so hilarious. Weird. Sony made Amazing. games that you had to pay for on a Sony product, but it was free on Microsoft. The MLB don't care about your console wars. <laughs> no, they don't. But but no. great. Here's the more interesting thing: if that deal goes through, every single um, World of Warcraft player will be able to play World of Warcraft for free. I mean, maybe I can't. That's I don't know how that works. I don't know. I doubt that. that. I'm willing you have to, to pay a subscription fee, though, right? Yeah, there's yeah. a subscription fee. Wow. The, sub sub the subscription fee free for uh, subscription fee for Game Pass Ultimate, which includes World of Warcraft, because it's for PC. Right. Well, you're, you're saying a lot of things definitively that are in the air. <laughs> uh, uh, again, like. It would be a first-party title. It would be free. 
I think it would be more of like it's an add-on. Like if you have Game Pass and World of Warcraft, you get it's ten dollars a month for World of Warcraft instead of fifteen. Kind of like they did Riot, the yeah. Riot Agreement or something. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Or we'll you see. get all that stuff that everybody has worked on really hard for the last twenty years. You just now get it. <laughs> that, that seems like that, a, that seems like a modern Blizzard move. They don't seem to care. That's it what I'm saying. Isn't that what they did with uh, with Riot Games with uh, League of Legends? Don't you, don't you like just get everything now? Something like that. Oh, I don't yeah, know. That's yeah. awful. That's terrible. Uh, so maybe anything, I'm misremembering that, but I don't remember. But if anything CB just said comes through, I get points. I just want to just make that clear. <laughs> yeah, <we're, laughs> that's why I said I'm 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 like piggybacking onto it because I think that would be like the coolest way for them to be like, yeah, this is how Game Pass goes up. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, that was our predictions for 2023. Stay tuned for next year when we uh, go back and uh, and see how we're doing. I'm looking forward to it already. It is a uh, I, I seriously just love hearing what we all come up with. And the fact that there's five of us with three predictions each, we had 15 different predictions and there was no overlap. Not yeah, true. true. Yeah. Actually. Good. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's like pretty that. cool. So. Let's move on to the meat and potatoes of the show, the 2022 Go Awards. Let's do it. All right, let's go ahead and do, we just did some random categories before we go and pick our actual uh, games of the year and the community's games of the year. Uh, Let's start with best new franchise of 2022. CB, what's your pick? Callisto Protocol. (laughs) <laughs> like I'm really not surprised at all that was going to be yours. Yeah, Callisto Protocol. Uh, mine was going to be. Uh, I'm going to say Evil West. I feel like the pickings were pretty slim for really high quality new franchises, but I had so much fun with the ridiculousness of Evil West that that got my pick. Grant, uh, Vamp Survivors. Survivors. I can't talk, but I can vote for Vamp Survivors as a uh, best new franchise. There's not enough- like a new genre. It is. It's like nothing I've ever played. I gra- I understand they kind of stole the idea from a couple of of mobile games that did it poorly before them. But I've never played a game like this before, and I think that's always kind of a sign of something cool. And it's so ugly. Like the title screen is one of the ugliest things I've ever seen in this game. <laughs> All the disparate art and pixel sizes. It's just a mess. But boy, is it fun. So that's my choice. Interesting. All right, Grant. Are right. you are Grant? Zach. Damn survivor. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Does um. Does Elden Ring count, or did we count that as a Souls game? Uh, I that's a new franchise. Yeah, I would but, say that's yeah. a new franchise. The only reason I didn't put it there was because I'm not quite sure what where to put that one yet. Like, is it actually going to be a franchise? Well, that's how that's that's why Vampire Survivors isn't getting my win here because I don't know if it will be. But Elden Ring, we already know Brandon Sanderson's working on a novel. Like, it's a franchise for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna say yeah. Elden Ring. I think we got. I think you got years of Elden Ring content to Bando Namco. Bandai Namco. Wait, yeah, Bandai Namco. Uh, <laughs> Damn Bandai Bamco. Bamco is going to be milking this thing dry for years because this is a monster. This is a mainstream hit. This wasn't just a Souls hit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe mine doesn't count then. Maybe Evil West doesn't count because they probably. I can't imagine that game did very well. I think new IP, man. It could be someone might make yeah. a comic out of Evil West. I, I just feel like okay. if it's a new IP. Maybe it doesn't continue, but it's still a new franchise, you know? Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, Alyssa? Y'all disagree. I'm going to go with Stray. I don't know if it will continue, but it could if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Game Three of the Year, according to... Time. Or Indie of the Year, was it? According to the Game Awards. Yeah, it was. Indie so, Game of the mm-hmm. Year. That's something. All right. Biggest surprise of 2022. I'm going to kick things off, and I'm just going to say Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> Uh, I, I think because I've never been a massive Sonic fan until this year, I just never expected to absolutely love that game as much as I did. So that was definitely a huge surprise for me. Grant? Uh, I chose this indie game that came out of nowhere that kind of blew me away called Lunistus. Do you guys play Lunistus? I have I, not. I've no, not no. heard of it. L-U-N-I-S-T-I-C-E. It's five bucks. It's on Switch and PC. And it plays like the best... OG 3D Sonic game I've ever played. It's like just really short, really tight, really fun, cool kind of PS1 art. Uh, and it's just a great platformer with good music. And it just sort of blew me away because it's cheap and fun and doesn't overstay its welcome. Uh, and I just it just came out of nowhere. It was suggested to me and I loved it. So that's my that's my pick. Nice. Uh, let's see, Zach. Does it, ha- does it have to be a game? 
No. I, these just are your a, categories. Just a surprise, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that Xbox beat PlayStation in sales for two different months in Japan. That's, That's huge. Yeah. It is huge, that, yeah. That is a uh, an omen of things to come. I feel like that's that's a canary in the coal mine, you know, because that's mm. that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, in yeah. Japan, not even a single month, much less right. much less two. Yeah, so that's my that's my vote. All right, and Choice. CB. Um, I I had also kind of the reason I said yes for Zach's was because I also chose something like like that, the death of Sega Arcade. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. in Japan, yeah. Oh yep. yeah, dude, that is oh, crazy. Oh yeah, like Bummer. it's it's it was still really big over there, and it's it's dead. We're we're gonna have to play Yakuza just to <laughs> revisit Sega. I know Japan. That's that's true. It 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 really makes me sad because I I I've always wanted arcades to thrive and survive forever, and the fact that like the biggest tentpole still out there is gone. I think Taito closed as well. They have a big yeah. One. And it's close. Mm-hmm. I got to see both those, luckily. Very lucky. But, yeah, they're both really cool, and it's too bad. All right, next one is underrated games of 2022. These are games that probably won't make our top ten list, but deserve to be recognized. I, I um, didn't get to answer oh, the yeah. last question. Scott's just like, yeah. no. <laughs> oh. S- Scott left her off the format. I've been trying to paste her in, but. I know, I like because I copied this from last year, so, like, I... <laughs> Forgot to put your name on there, so I totally Ron Burgundy out of that She was on the one. show for last year, too. <laughs> yeah, I was. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I don't get it. I was going to say Vampire Survivors, because I wasn't expecting to like it, and I love it now, and it's so much deeper than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew it would yeah. make you happy, Scott, and then you forgot me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's so excited okay. about his underrated <laughs> choice. You should have changed it. I am so sorry, Alyssa. It's okay. It is my fault. My fault. Ugh. I I, trying. I put your name in there in the wrong spot anyway. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Now we move on to underrated games. Starting with Zach, uh starting with Grant, excuse me. Underrated games. I put Blast Brigade on here. I feel yes. like I feel like no one knows. I don't know if anyone's ever gonna know. Their trailer and marketing was so terrible. Agreed. And, <laughs> and no one's gonna know that this game is just like one of my favorite Metroidvanias of the last however many years. Up oh, Gear Gated Games. Yeah. Thank of you. The last <laughs> Close call. Several years. <laughs> All right. He caught himself. I'm done. Nice. Alyssa? First off, South of the Circle is a really great narrative game. G- gets you all in the feels, and I feel like no one's played it besides okay. me because I did review it on the website. You can read that on the gaminghouse.com. <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed that game and the story that it told. And I had one other one. Arcade Spirits, the new Challengers. This is a visual novel, but it's a sequel. And if you're a gamer, this is just made for you because it's got so many Easter eggs and homages to video games in it. It's just a lot of fun. I laughed playing it or reading it mostly, honestly. There is a mini game in this one, but it's just so lovingly crafted. So those are my two. All right. Uh, Let's see, Zach. Oh man, best underrated game. Black Black Wind, which almost made my list, is my number eleven game of the year. It's a little uh, top down kind of mech, uh, almost Zelda esque game where you have it going in these little dungeons and stuff. Uh, where mm-hmm. you play as a kid in a mech suit, which is kind of which is kind of fun. Uh, I put Evil Dead the game on here because I had Ooh. I had a lot of fun with it, but multiplayer I just don't really stick with multiplayer games, and no one else was really playing it. They you know? love that. They they love that property. You can tell in the little Definitely, I play. Yeah. There. Definitely, and Aaron from the Gaming Outsider, or from the Hollywood Outsider, I apologize, our sister podcast, he was supposed to play with me a bunch, but, you know, he hates video games, and then uh, <laughs> it feels like, <laughs> and then uh, I, I put Babylon's Fall on here because I did have fun with Babylon's Fall. I actually made it to the end of the story, uh, you know, so which which not a lot of people are going to ever be able to say about Babylon's Fall. Uh, True. And so, so I did enjoy it. Uh, it just uh, was poorly supported, and it kept it very strangely had a, a mechanic, a very important mechanic that they keep hidden from you until about three fourths of the way through the story, where you hmm. can start you can start playing it much more like Bayonetta or their other games. And I don't I don't know why they buried that eight hours into the game. It makes it's no sense. Weird decision. 
Because cause that's why you go there, right? Because it's platinum. And then when you start playing, you're like, oh, I guess they're just going for something different. No, they it is just a platinum game. You just have to earn it for some reason. Very strange. I don't understand at all. But anyway. Make any sense. Uh, was that it? Yep, that's it. Just just three for me. All right, CB. Ooh. So, for me, uh, Immortality. Hmm. That's one I still need to play. Me too. Um, Immortality was on there. Arcade Paradise. Woo! I remember you really liking that game. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Still do. Uh, and... I had a third one. I have to scroll because pages. Uh, Trek to <laughs> Yomi. I almost put that one on mine. It was very close. That's a black and white one, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. I heard good things about that one, too. Uh, for me, uh, one that didn't make my list, and I, I, the, just because of the sheer amount I played it, which was not very much, but I still think Metal Hellsinger is worth looking at if you like rhythm games and you like shooters. I think what they did is really fun. I think it's a. Uh, I think the bosses are a little too difficult in terms of like their HP meter is just way too long, but it's just st- still stupid fun, especially if you love metal. I just love ramping up those combos and then the vocals hit. And you just feel like a god for a minute. It's great. So, uh, yeah, that gets my pick. All right, uh, most disappointing game of 2022, Alyssa. Let's start with you this time. Well, my choice is one that is a very niche choice, but I was very disappointed by it. Kaiju, the Kaiju Dating Simulator. I remember Disapp- you talking about that. It disappointed me so much. It was so repetitive, and it just, it was 30 minutes per run, and it was the same thing over and over again. I just wanted it to be more. <laughs> <laughs> more Kaiju, more Dating Sim. All right, Zach, what's your most disappointing game? Solstice is a game I was very much looking forward oh. to going into the year. Uh, it had such berserk vibes, and I mean, I mean, it definitely tried to be that a little bit, but it just, uh, it, it, it was a clear case of, you know, it had six hours of content, but it was 20 hours long. Right. Yeah. You know, it was just so many endless corridors of fighting, and, and the story was so, <laughs> the, the characters talked a lot, but nobody said anything, which was very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, yeah, it was just it really just because I was so excited for Solstice, and it was just, a clever concept too. Like it felt like it was something kind of fresh. Yeah, and it had this kind of interesting, you know, the left trigger or right trigger. You, you could only hurt enemies if you had certain auras around you, so you had to keep flipping back and forth, which was cool at first and kind of got overwhelming. And yeah, it just uh, and eventually got to the point where you just had to constantly be holding one down, which is pretty annoying. Like even when you're out of combat for puzzles. But anyway, the point is, it just yeah, it's just. The most frustrating aspect was it was just so much content that didn't need to be there and wasn't fulfilling. Okay. Uh, CB, what was your most disappointing? Scorn. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. I kind of wanted to like that game a lot more. Oh, wait, Did you finish it? I couldn't. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, as much as I love like H.R. Giger and mm-hmm. that motif, I was really hyped on it. And it just plays like a turd. I just uh, there's so much like what do I do? Yeah, and I just I became so off put by it that I'm like, no. CB, I felt like that would have been a fun game for us to sit down and play together with one person playing and one person reading a guide. <laughs> Which, yeah, you know what I mean? Because like. Uh, I don't want to sit and spend the time to figure out some of those puzzles, but I want to see what it does. I want to see, you know, the art, and I want to see what happens in that story, which I hear the story doesn't make any sense by the time you get to the end of it, but... Yeah. So, it's too bad. Uh, I'm going to make some enemies with uh, with my most disappointing game of the year. Ooh. <laughs> but, uh, is it... Is it... Oh, I got to hear it. <laughs> I don't want to... I don't want to steal your thoughts. Is it God of War? No, it's not God oh, of War. Okay. It's no, I like God of War. No, I know you liked it, but you, you know. Vampire. Oh, you're ex survivor. No, uh, Callisto Protocol. No. Oh. Oh. I like it. Uh, I mean, I, no, I, I'm not knocking. No, cause I, I know CB liked it a lot more than I did. I know you liked it. I just, I, I haven't finished it, and I have felt very little pull to go back and finish it because I just felt so turned off uh, by what that game chose to do instead of what I wanted it to do. So it's more of less a didn't meet my expectations then it's a bad game but i just felt disappointed by is it because it's a, 
a, more, a melee game instead of a shooting game? Maybe. I, I, I think... I just really wanted more dead space. Maybe so. Maybe that's yeah, what well, it is. <laughs> that's why I'm asking because, in terms of atmosphere and everything, it, it's still very much dead space. It's just the only difference is it's melee instead of shooting. Right. I, I think that's and his it, biggest problem with it is the fact that it's melee, whereas Scott doesn't like to stay in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. I'm always running away from fights and shooting from a distance. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, even in dead space, that's what I do. I just no, yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not judging you. Just to be clear. I just, no, no, no. I understand. I. uh yeah. I I need to go give it another shot, I suppose, because I, I apparently I was like right on the cusp of the story getting interesting from what CB told me, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I hear I the just, update's pretty big too. Like they like they they sped up reloading and sped up animations, and it's not as, <laughs> yeah, it's not, like it's big just it. big changes to the way it plays. So maybe you should give it oh. a shot and see how it feels. The healing yeah. animation is double, which is insane. Because yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. actually, yeah, it doesn't quite look right because it's so fast. No, it does. It's so. It does not, because he's still moving at his normal speed. Otherwise, then he just goes into speed force, basically. Just, oh, really? Must yeah, heal. That's really, really goofy. It's well, just funny because a... because I couldn't heal during the final boss, but now it seems like it would be no problem. That's really going to change the difficulty of that. Oh, yeah, that, well. that that final boss when you're like, gotta heal, gotta heal, gotta heal. Yeah. Nope, can't. Not gonna happen. You gotta you gotta be you gotta issue perfection on the final boss. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe I do need to go give it a, a shot then, but. Uh, yeah, it's just a not not what I wanted, and, and it's funny you say that with the, with the healing too, because in Dead Space, which I know it's not the same game, but in Dead Space, you just tap the button and you're healed, right? Like that was just how that game worked, right? So perhaps and, their perhaps their problem was that all the marketing was like, "Hey, look, we're Dead Space," mm-hmm. when really, yeah, was that, was like, that, that was a problem. That was we're just a space horror game, not managing expectations very well at all. Yes, yeah, yeah. which you know. Could be a me problem more than it is a fault of the game, but I'm not done with it. I will I will go back to it. So, uh, and Grant, you were the last one for most disappointing game. I'll have to explain myself for this. Uh oh, okay. but I put I put tunic. <gasps> and then, oh, oh, you broke yeah. CB's heart. Let me explain. Let me just tell you why. I feel like the first half of that game is one of the best gaming experiences I've ever had in my life. Like I I I was like. Everything with the manual, all everything with looping it back to places you've been before was just perfection. And then all of a sudden the game changed into something I just hated. When things kind of go dark and things change and it's a dash party, I just hated it. And I had to I had to force myself to finish it. And it left me with a really sour taste in my mouth. So I loved it in the fr- front half as much as I hated it in the back half. And that's why I found it disappointing. Music is great, plays tight, but I feel like some of the looseness in the combat started to show itself a little bit as things got harder and so it just i just i just don't think about it anymore which is super sad because man the first the first half of that game was just my favorite thing so that's why it's it's not you know the whole experience wasn't disappointing but that's why i, I couldn't help but think of that experience for this category so i'm gonna have to remind myself to remove grant from christmas card list <laughs> <laughs> no longer well i mean no i feel like i also to say the same thing about Callisto Protocol. I'm not saying that I think that Callisto Protocol is the worst game I played. It's just most disappointing because I was. It's not what I was expecting. No, I get it, and yeah. it makes makes me sad that the both of you just took a big old like <laughs> dump on my heart here. What else did Chris? Oh, I have Chris's top ten. I'll just like use the rest <laughs> of the <this> episode <laughs> no, to bad mouth just everything. Like, crap all over this. He just went through each of our lists and said, "Which of these games will I put on my most disappointing list?" <laughs> <laughs> sad. All right, did I get everybody on that one? I don't want to make sure I skip over anybody this time. Uh, let's go with games that uh, you regret not checking out in 2022. CB, I feel like you played every game made. In- nope. <laughs> no? No, I'm, I'm, I actually missed a couple big ones. Okay. So, um, go ahead. I didn't play Gotham Knights. I don't regret that. I do. Yeah? Um. I still haven't started Stray. That's on my list. I'm waiting for the Xbox version. Like, per, you know, personally, I don't, I don't <laughs> try to play on PC, but I, I'm with you there too. I'm still just is it coming waiting my turn. To Xbox for sure. It will eventually. I think there's like a six month or year deal or something. It'll. I bet you. I bet you it will be on Game Pass. That's just. I should are, have put that in one of my predictions, but I feel like it will just yeah. show up there at some point. Are you Are you on Steam Deck? Do you have a Steam Deck? I do not. I, I could play oh, it on okay. PC. I just I just like I, I that's a game I want to kick back on the couch and, and Claire gotcha. might want to watch too with all the cat stuff. So we'll see. Um, 
But yeah, those two, and then also missing. I mean, not playing my VR as much as I would like. I I keep charging it, and then like getting started and having a kid this year, it's a little harder. So hopefully next yeah. year, more VR. You need like a little picture-in-picture picture window in in your VR so that you can see, like you can keep an eye on the kid. <laughs> Dude, oh, I would love that. Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, I, I'm. I thought you picked up Stray. I bought it. I I believe it or not, I've bought Stray, I've bought Gotham Knights, and I've bought Midnight Suns, and I haven't ah. opened any of them. Holy cow! That's a lot of games. Okay. Uh, my turn. I had Stray on my list. I I really regret that I have not played Modern Warfare Two yet. Um, yeah. I'm, oh, I was man. really surprised you didn't have that on your list because I want to play that campaign so badly, but I just don't want to pay 60, 70 bucks for it because I know that's, you know, yeah, I don't know. I'm cheap. I'll it's wait for very, a price drop on It's very good. I remember. I remember you talking about it. Uh, I also, I'm going to say this one, and I know it's weird, but I feel like I'm I'm putting it on here because I feel more left out than regretting not playing it, but Elden Ring. I I know it's my fault. Did you not play I it at all? Exp- I played it for a couple hours and it di- it didn't grab me. It, I think that game scares me more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, I need I need successes to keep going with a game, even if it's challenging. And when the, you know when a game just keeps killing you and making you start you know over or going have to go back and pick up your stuff and just how many moving parts in that just feel very overwhelming. Um, it, it's clearly a case of I just I suck at these kinds of games and I've never gotten good at them so um, but I definitely feel left out of the conversation because everybody just loves this game I, I I think I read a stat this week that Elden Ring is the most quit game and also the most completed game of 2022 <laughs> like th- the fact that that game is that is is nuts to me I mean I think it has a higher platinum percentage than most other from software games so that's a pretty clear sign that people love this game to death. Yeah. It really is nuts. it really is something to see people, you know, making easy modes so easy or, you know, offering easy mode if you die more than two or three times. That's not stuff that yeah. happened ten years ago. You have that happening on one side, and then you have literally the most difficult game ever changing people's the way they play game. You know what I mean? Like it's just a really interesting thing to see both of those things happening at the same time. Okay. Um Yeah. But yeah. I do. I do remember the old Devil May Cry games where you die too often. Yes. They would like shame. They would like shame you, especially like, three. Hey. Yeah, I noticed you. I know she just can't. You just can't play this game right, huh? You want an easy, buddy? You sure? Yeah. You sure this is a game for you? I kind of miss that. <laughs> remember the or, uh, Wolfenstein games? That if you put it on easy mode, it would like, like put like the baby bonnet on yes, you. Yes, I remember. That. Fire. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. That was. But that game did not punish you with the achievements if you played it on easy. That, that's story. respectable, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I had two more on my list: uh, Immortality, which uh, CB mentioned, or somebody mentioned. Me? Um, yes, yeah, that you? Yeah. I, 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 sh- I really want to kind of go back and play that one. I keep hearing awesome things about that one, and Pentiment is another one that uh, I keep hearing awesome things about, and I just never got around to playing it. So, Grant, what do you miss? Uh, what, do you, what do you regret not getting uh, to check out this year? Uh, I didn't touch my Switch much this year. Um, with Game Pass being what it is uh, and the time I do have to play. So the two that I really wanted to try that I didn't is Kirby and the Forgotten Lands because I hear it's, it's a, a lot of fun. It's a great game. I hear it's just distilled fun, which is, is a good time. And I really like the first Mario Rabbids game. I hear this one's really, really good too, if not better. So um, I didn't get a chance to, to, to try that, but that's what 2023 is for. So there you go. those are my two. Alyssa? Well, I definitely have to agree with you on one Game Scott, I have severe FOMO, Elden Ring. Yeah. I have not played any of it and I I really do want to play it. I know it's going to be hard, but I really want to play it. So, maybe this year I can sit down and just challenge myself. But that's Maybe that could be one. a you and I thing. Like we both we just should. like force we each sh- other and yes. like Yes. Yeah. Tag team it. We'll do that. And like give each other cuz everybody is already we're already out of the zeitgeist of people because like yeah. our, our, our Discord was just blowing up with people giving each other hints on how to do builds and where to find this and where to do that. and Yeah, we can help each other out or complain to each other about, I'm stuck at this place. Can't you yeah. co-op it? Can't you just co-op it? Yeah, you it? can. Yeah. Oh, you should do that. Yeah. 
I'll join your Discord call and just cheer you guys yes. on. Yes. We'll, yeah. We we need we need you. You are like you're, you're, the Dark Souls just king. We need I'll you. Hear me, you hear me crying? <laughs> I'll join you in the crying, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Let's Sex go. Like, you, you can do it. I'd watch that I'm whole stream. Be, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in your corner, guys. I'm, I'm for you. I just, I don't know. Cause can't you like watch us play it in in Discord as well? Can't you stream to Discord I'm, now? I'm oh, sure. Be, I don't know. That might yeah. be hilarious. To you know watch, what? Honestly. There, there you go, Scott. You you talked about how you always wanted to do some streaming. Mm, perfect Scott and Alyssa attempt Elden Ring. Elden Ring. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could join your guys' game. I think it goes. Yeah. I think it's more than two co-op. So I can just, I'll just hang back and like watch you guys and do emotes of cheering on. And then when boss. we're both crying, you just go in and beat the boss for us. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if he's being a bully, I'll help you guys out. If, if you so have... that game doesn't do the Borderlands thing where if you come in with a high level character, it makes the boss that much tougher. It doesn't do that, right? No, it's it's a it's the number of players that gets more health. Oh, so it will be tougher. It, <laughs> he'll really... have more health, but he won't be tougher. I'm saying, you know. Gotcha. You yeah. know what? I'll, at that point yeah. in time, I'll just join in and I'll just sit there and watch as well. He just wants. He just wants. He just wants to add to the health bar. He just wants to <laughs> laugh at me. Is what he wants to do. We'll we'll get you guys. It's okay. CB we'll loves. CB loves to watch me suffer at games. If you saw him watch me play uh, Ikaruga or the Dragon's Lair games when I first played those, uh, he loves just to see me just struggle. I don't know why he enjoys that so much, but he really does. I can see on his face he does. It's kind of it's kind of weird because it would be like watching a golden retriever puppy get kicked over and over again. Yeah, doesn't really seem that great. Yeah, but he loves See, it for some CB's reason. He's got some explaining no, to do. No, no, it's it would be more or less like putting a like a glass shield in front of him, putting the treat on the other side, oh, and then just watching oh, Scott try to get oh my to it. God, <laughs> it's devastating. He's a monster. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I had two other ones I wanted to mention. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Sonic Frontiers because you all hyped it up and I've never played a Sonic game besides the first one so I need to rectify that I am sorry oh. Kevin I know oh you're listening God. right now I'm sorry I didn't know <laughs> Alyssa didn't play it I genuinely thought I she have had it, and I do have it I just haven't played it yet <laughs> and also yeah. I do want to play Callisto Protocol just to see what it's about but I'm going to wait for a sale it's, good, it's so good divisive call. You can, yeah you can, it's going to be intriguing to see your your thoughts yeah i want to see which side i lean on i feel like that needs to be a category next year is what's the most divisive game because callisto protocol definitely would have taken it this year yeah like like the one that people are just so divided on whether or not it's a good game or not and i don't think people think it's a bad game i think it's just uh one that that people yeah like i like like me just a game that's not for you yeah i was trying to avoid (laughs) it but all right (laughs) uh is that is it the last one or no 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 zach uh-huh. Uh huh. Stray. I'll also say Stray. Yeah. Um, I guess a lot of us missing out on that one. Uh, it's crazy. I didn't play a Plague Tale Requiem. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it just. I think it just came out when I didn't have money, and then the, the releases happened so fast, and then my job got insane. So I, I really want to play a Plague Tale. I think you know, I want to watch that lady just kill a bunch of people. It sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, and then and then Roller Drome, I really wanted to play. Mm, yeah, I, I yeah. should have added that to mine too. It looked the, the, like the inline jet set radio with guns sounds yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, you know. So I, I, do, I really do want to get around to checking that out at some point because that looks like a, a genuinely fresh idea. You know, somewhat. Even though I just call it jet set with guns, so I guess it's not that fresh. But you know what I mean. It's a it's, it's a, a different... it's a fresh combination of ideas. Yeah, yeah. It's a different there it's a go. different little experience. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, best narrative of 2022. This one may surprise you guys, but uh, I'm going to say God of War Ragnarok had the best narrative of 2022. A little long, but that is some of the best storytelling. Rarely in a game do I sit there and enjoy listening to banter between characters while I'm going from point A to point B. And I never once in that entire game heard the same conversation repeated unless it was like I got interrupted because I would go into an area. Oh yeah. And then Kratos would be like, hold that thought. We'll come back to it soon. Oh yeah. The, the, the Spider-Man thing. Right. And yeah. then you come back and then, and then um, what's his name? The guy with the head. Mamir. Mamir. Mamir would just be like, now what were you saying about that? And then he just kind of picks up the story right where he left off. And I just, 
and I couldn't wait. Like I, as much as I was going to do something, it kept me entertained going through this going through this open world that normally is a chore. It never felt like a chore because there was always something to talk about. There was always something to listen to. And I just really enjoyed a lot of the aspects of this story. I will say it it, it does suffer some of the same faults of the first one, Zach. Uh, there's an entire section of the game towards the end that I feel like it's completely irrelevant. Like it doesn't <laughs> even, it doesn't matter uh, yeah. because of what happens in the end game. It's just like, really? We went through all that and it meant oh, nothing? Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, Alyssa? <laughs> I think I do, yeah. But still, uh, overall, there was there just wasn't a game that I thought was a better story, in my opinion. Mm. So, gotta wear Ragnarok. Grant? Uh, my pick is a game called Far Changing Tides. Oh, That's nice. the one I wanted to play as well. I totally forgot to play that one. I, I love the first on, one. I think it's on Game Pass. I think it's I should play there. it. Uh, it's a sequel to Far Lone Sails. Um, it's an environmental storytelling experience. There's no text. There's no dialogue. It is you solo with your vessel. And the first one, um, you were in sort of a steam powered vehicle with wheels. This is you're on a ship changing tides. Um, and it's just really, really cool. A lot of, you're sort of at the mercy of this world and the, and the games are connected in a way. So not enough that you have to play the first one first, but I just, so much happened. It's one of those things where, the story of the game is your experience in it by the time you're done. Um, you know, you're the character in, in, in this world, and I just found it to be really effective and not too long. So, yeah, that's my pick. That's really interesting that the best narrative has no dialogue or text. Yeah. That is so intriguing to me that I feel like I want to... But you said I don't have to play the first one. It's a very powerful adventure. It's sort of like if you were in a situation in this world, what would you do to try and move forward? You wouldn't necessarily be talking if it's just you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's still a narrative and still a story involved, and it's sort of like it's like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's so. the that's the power of video games, right? Telling telling mm -hmm. a yep. narrative only a game could. Yep. Hmm. Great like game though. Great list. killer music. Like absolutely, if some people should check that one out. I don't know. If, I don't know if the first game's on Game Pass, but uh, Changing Tides is. So. All right. Alyssa. This was extremely tough for me to pick between two, but I ended up choosing God of War Ragnarok because love the story, love the mythology, all the different characters, loved it. But A Plague Tale Requiem was very close. Hmm. All right. Zach? Elden Ring. I love uh -huh. I love the story in Elden Ring. I love, I mean, I always love the story in Souls games because you're like this detective piecing everything together because everyone's just giving you pieces of the information and nobody's ever giving you the whole. And I think that's great. And, and similar to, to Grant's pick with Far, it's, such it's only only a video game can tell a story in this way uh and and that's always exciting and i just love that like it takes it it takes those kind of uh, the soul style of storytelling that we've had before but it kind of makes it bigger it's very mythic there's you know there's there's gods falling from the stars and there's these different uh you can you can feel the martin influence the george R. R. martin influence with the different houses and the lineages especially with the fact that everybody's names are so freaking similar but uh it yeah, it's just really enraptured this world. And like when I heard Brandon Sanderson was doing a novel, I'm like, yes, yes, please. I want, I want more of this universe they've built. Cool, nice. TB, God of War. Really? Yep. So you I, finished it? I haven't finished it, but I'm still. <laughs> but here's the thing, it it for me it's the same thing. Like, the story is just so. It sucks you in so much that, like, the only reason I haven't finished it is because of life problems. Right. But the game just, the story alone just draws you in. And, I mean, I, I like it. I, I just love listening to Mimir. Like, I could literally sit here and be like, just give me Mimir and just make a podcast of him talking. <laughs> He does have a cool voice. Good call. Uh, next up is best retreading of old ground. Uh, we basically said like, you know, like a sequel or, you know, something that kind of uses another idea. Remakes. Gonna... Yeah, so it's a little open to interpretation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Grant? Oh, this was an easy one for me, man. Atari 50. Oh, with, nice, with, dude. With a bullet. Like, I have never played a game that is um, organized like this before. 
it's not really a game. It's a timeline. It's a do- it's a documentary experience that's been translated to to a game interface. Um, but man, just if you want to have appreciation, you you get you might build your Raspberry Pi and stick all 400, 2600 games on there. What is that? Like, what are you going to do with that? This goes through the time. It, it talks about individual games, shows the art, has the manuals, uh, explains why they were difficult to make. Really makes you have an appreciation of old stuff uh, in a new way. And I just thought it was really, really cool. So if anyone has not See, it sounds that, so. I love the treatment like the Mega Man games get in that collection, which which sounds similar, but this just sounds the way you walk through the timeline. It's so cool. It's really cool. I started it over Thanksgiving actually, and and because uh, I knew it was front loaded with a lot of video, so my parents could watch some of it because I thought they might be interested. They, my mom wasn't trying to read the flyers or zooming in, you know, on the television screen. But there's some really good interviews and stuff with the team that put together the 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 first the first arcade video games. The story of the broken pong machine that was broken because it was just full of quarters. And they didn't know what to do with it. Uh, so, but yeah, really cool stuff. And I think fits this category well. So. I like it. Alyssa? This one was hard for me, but I'm going to say Disney Dream Up Valley because it borrows so heavily from Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley, but it's just so much fun. And Disney. It's just. I yeah, mean, it's, it's like the, it retreading it's just, old ground. I mean, that's like. Yeah, it's just so nostalgic seeing all these characters we know and love in this game. So that that's my big Disney Dreamlight Valley. All right, uh, Zach. Uh, I, this is a little bit of a cheat because because I uh, only just got a PS5, but I'm going to say Demon Souls. Oh, did that come out yeah. this year? No, it didn't. That's why I said it's a little bit of a cheat because I didn't oh, okay. I didn't get to play it until this year. Ah. but I thought it was I uh, you know I thought it was a so yeah so I'm bending the rules a little bit. It's your but category. It was, uh, yeah, it was just so much fun to to redo, you know, and I mean, the PS3 version is still great, of course, but this is just, it's it's one of the most, it's, it is the prettiest game I have ever played, which is easy to do when you're remaking something, but it was just like seeing all these, seeing all of those environments again in a new light was, it was great, and it was especially fun to see this game that I, you know, was pulling my hair out to beat when it came out, now I was just walking through it almost casually. Hmm. Because because the games have just they've gotten harder each time. So like going back to this one is almost like almost it was almost like a walk through a little park. Almost it was nice. It was really cool. Very cool. CB. Well, this is gonna be kind of funny. Tari Mania. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> because oh, uh, nice for for me like it was it was the best retraining of old ground because they took the original Atari games and blended them together into something new. That's and really cool. It is, dude. That game was a blast and a half. We need to play each other's I feel like games. These two now. games need to come in in like a package deal at some dude, point. I, I, I really agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you play with the Atari Fifty first, and then go to Atari Mania. Yep, that's cool. What a good. That's a great yeah. idea. Nice. Uh, let's see. And that leaves me. I'm gonna say Return to Monkey Island. I love me some Monkey Island games, and uh, they've somehow managed to keep that formula alive. That humor still works, and you know, able to do it without actually pointing and clicking. Uh, you know, you ac- you can actually move the character around, and it's still funny. I need to go back and finish it. It's it's great. I really like that one. Coolest new character. We are going to start with Zach. Let's say Danny from the Callisto Protocol, especially by the. Near, nearer to the story's end, she just gets cooler and cooler, and she is the main character of the story. You cannot convince me otherwise. Uh, yeah, and I, I liked her. I liked how she had, she had no time for you, the main character. So uh, <laughs> she was great. I liked her a lot. All right, CB, Fox, Fox, Fox from Tunic. From oh, Tunic. Tunic. <laughs> He's a cool character. I love that character. <laughs> Leave me alone. All right. Uh, I'm going to say Jesse Rentier, <laughs> just because I just think he's just so over the top and ridiculous. It's hard not to think. I don't know. It, it's like they took a Gears character and said, let's just ramp it to 20. <laughs> is this, I'm sorry, is this the guy from Evil West? Yeah, from Evil West. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I just uh, thought that was pretty good. Uh, Grant. I don't remember his name. I didn't look it up. Instead, I decided to write that Elden Ring boss what pulls a human-covered sword out of their snake hole. Um, 
Are you familiar with who I'm speaking of, Zach? That sounds dirty. I'm pretty sure. Yeah I, yeah, I also don't remember his name. I don't remember yes, his do name. Know. But he's like a snake, giant snake, and then you think you kill him, and then he turns around and he has a face, a human face, and then he pulls the sword out of his mouth and it's covered in people and then he fights you with the second the yeah second yeah he's one he's one of like the great gods too but yeah i can't remember his name right now well holy crap that is the coolest character i've seen all year because i and i couldn't yeah. think of anyone else so that's what i wrote down starts with an r i know that there's anyway. so many cool looking oh, ridiculous. characters in that game again makes me wish i had played it who at that company's uh, having these nightmares <laughs> to come right, up with right. these characters <laughs> right and uh, lastly, Alyssa. Okay, the character doesn't have a name, but it's Meow Meow, meow from Stray. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was going to be the cat from Stray. <laughs> I could not pick the cat. I love cats so much. You named the cat Meow Meow. Yes. They so don't adorable. give him a name, so... Or her. I don't even know what gender the cat is. Right, yeah, don't misgender the cat now. So they just go by Meow Meow. <laughs> Gotta play that game. Gotta play that game. Uh, next category is normally I totally wouldn't be into this award. We're going to start with CB. Again, however you interpret that. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah. Lego Star Wars. Lego Star Wars. The Skywalker Lego saga. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> no, I like, I like just like that you call it Lego Star Walker. Star Wars. Star Wars. Lego Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, Lego You're Star Wars. You're not into Lego games? Since when? Look at my achievement list and count the Lego games. I, There's only I'm shocked. two. Wow. And one of them was That's Lego surprising. Brick Tales. Before okay. that, I played like the Lego Indiana Jones game once, and I was like, I ah, don't like it. Uh, Lego Star Wars, though. Loved it. Huh. I did not see that coming. Mine, I, I feel like this shouldn't be a surprise, and I keep talking about it, but Sonic Frontiers. I, I've never been into Sonic games until Kevin forced me to play Sonic Generations this year, and then I uh, got into Sonic Frontiers and loved it. Was not expecting that, so... Very big surprise for me. Grant? Uh, neon White? You guys play Neon White? I need to play oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I'm not really like a running, jumping, speed running, you know, shave seconds off your time kind of guy, but boy, this stuff, this game's fun. It's so fun and tight. Um, it's on, It's available for Switch, but it's better on PC. Uh, and I think it's on PS5 as well. I think, yeah, recently. Yeah, so it's mm. awesome. Alyssa? Again, broken record, but Vampire Survivors. And Zach. Yep, vamp Vampire Survivors. I don't really, you know, I don't really like roguelikes, and I yep. don't normally care about arcade games very much, but I don't ever want to stop playing. Va I'm mad I'm not playing Vampire Survivors right now. <laughs> I mean, I won't tell if you if if you won't. <laughs> uh, next award is Best Tunes to Chill With. I sound like a broken record now because I have a hard time finding cooler music than Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> between the ambient music and the kick-ass stuff that plays when you are fighting one of the bosses it, it is just so good. I never thought I would want ambient music in a Sonic game, um, but then they just ramp things up when you turn Super Sonic or whatever, and, like, damn near metal-esque yeah. tunes. It's really good. I, like, awesome. I, I want to get the soundtrack just to listen to that. It's good. Grant, how about you? Uh, I put High on Life late edition um really yeah the i was like man this sounds familiar and it turns out it's this guy named tobacco who i'm a big fan of tobacco did the soundtrack for high on life and it's like this really grimy gooey lo-fi electronic stuff okay. it's just great and it's not the weird thing is it's on the soundtracks available for pre-order on bandcamp but it doesn't come out till beginning of february which is a huge mistake to put it yeah. out that late. But Tobacco is big stuff. Uh, my wife int introduced me to him, and he did all the music for, I guess, Justin Orleans a fan, and that helped push me through the game, honestly. The music is just killer. So Nice. Yeah, real good. Oh, Alyssa, how about you? I really like the music from We Are OFK, because okay. that basically forms the backbone of the whole game series. There's five episodes. I'm going to call it game series, but it's just a game. Um, I just really like the music, and the way it tied into the story. Okay. Very cool. Zach, Mr. Uh, I don't like music. Well, I do like Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely, man. Those are some chill. Those are absolutely, you can read to that music, that open world music. 
Yeah. But then once you once you get going, when you get in those little levels and it's kind of got like these little electronica songs going on. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's the word. I don't know how to talk about music. Uh, when <laughs> when when Grant called uh, the soundtrack grimy and gooey, I was like, I don't know what that I don't know what that means. <laughs> but uh, but then yeah, when you get to those boss battles and the, the heavy metal starts pumping in, oh dude, it's so cool. Sonic Frontiers absolutely blew me away with the soundtrack. Nice CB, Elden Ring. Mm. Okay, just because that that soundtrack, I could just it's it's just always there, present in the background, and like I never noticed it until like I was going through Spotify, and I'm like, oh look. It's just chill. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check that one out. Uh, this was a new category that last year that I think Zach added. My new waifu slash husbando award. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm assuming you know which. Uh, I I guess take it however you will. Like uh, which? What's the sexiest <laughs> character of of 2022? Grant. Uh, I didn't know what to put for this. Uh, so I put that Elden Ring boss what pulls a human-covered sword out of their snake hole, <laughs> who I've learned is named Rikert, R- yes, Rikert right. the God-devouring serpent boss. So say, yeah, I mean go- that name though. Rikert's got a lot going on. Let's say. Uh, Did you like right. the way he pulled the sword out? I was gonna say, who knows about? He- well, we know he could fit a lot in his mouth, so that's good news. <laughs> Uh, as soon as Alyssa gathers herself, she will be next. <laughs> okay. I really, I really liked Freya, Freya's sister, which the names are too similar. God of War Fre- Ragnarok. Freya, Freya's sister. Uh, Freya's brother. Sorry, Freya's brother. Okay, yeah, Freya. All right, interesting because Freya, Freya was mine. Yeah. So, oh, okay. that worked out well. Yeah, Zach. Uh, you know, as, as tempting as all of the lovely specimens on display in Elden Ring are, including <laughs> Rikert and, and Melania, Blade of Mikola, uh, I, I I went with Pascalina from Vampire Survivors because I can't, I can't imagine my life without her. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's great. What's her starting weapon? She the, uh, the, the, rune, the rune tracer. Hmm. The rune tracer. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the little... Yeah. The diamond that bounces oh, around yeah, yeah, the yeah. screen and stuff. Yeah, it's I love it. Nice. And I love her. <laughs> CB. <laughs> um Melania. Oh yeah. Nicola. And Kratos. Oh my Kratos. Oh. Wow. Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey man. I, I got some dirty things to say, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> said both, man. Said both, dude. This absolutely. Is you, you want you wanted my new waifu and my new husband, though. Oh, I I, I, I thought it know. was I yeah. thought it was either Sorry. or. I didn't well, I didn't he, go he, for both. He made he made the category his own. Yep, that's true. That's they're true. Open, they're in an open thing. All <laughs> right, one more category before we get to our game of the year. Personal favorites is the well is the best. Well, damn, I won't be forgetting that anytime soon. Award and Zach, what do you got? It's gotta be. Sonic Frontiers when you get all the Chaos Emeralds for the first time, uh-huh. and you go Super Sonic, and you're you're fighting these giant Titans, and the and the the rock music's playing, and you're you're doing the you're flying through the air as you destroy this guy, and then you're you're doing these cool QTE moments where you're like you know it's it's you're basically playing an anime. It's almost yeah. like it it's not too far from the feeling you got when you played Astra's Wrath if you remember that game. I remember that game. Yeah, it feels like that, dude. It was it's just so cool. I loved it. Nice. I like it. CB? The end of Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. What, is, could, what the hell happened? Do you Power Wash I'm not telling you it. Any, I, am, I am leaving it at that. I am not telling you can, anything can more. You, can you let us know after we're finished recording? Yes. Do you Power Wash the Earth? Yeah, I was going to say, what could it possibly <laughs> like, be? It's, it's like Portal 2. All of a sudden, the moon gets involved. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's all I'm gonna say. Just oh, all right. So I, I just drink. okay. I took that as like just a satisfaction feeling, but uh, there's a okay. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, it. Scott. Wait, have you finished? Oh, it, the Scott? thing you showed me. No, I haven't finished it. The, oh, so I, I I'm the, the only thing... one in the group that knows. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm gonna leave it at that. I mean, it's not the thing that you showed me when I was at your house, is it? I don't know. A big. 
you know. Anyway. Nope. Okay. I, 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 we gotta move on from that. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, me. Right? I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna say the uh, the Nidhog fight in God of War Ragnarok. Uh, okay, that that pretty- stood out to me as like one of the coolest boss battles I had seen in a long time. Um, that uh, that stands out to me as cool. the most memorable moment from that game outside of maybe some of the end game stuff. But wow, that was really cool. I didn't see that coming. Grant, uh, I put scorn. Um, I, huh. I was also disappointed by the combat. I really liked the, the figuring. I liked the puzzle parts. I liked figuring out what the puzzle is and then doing it. And the combat turned me off. But there was a couple sequences in that game that I will never... That, there's one in, in particular involving sort of a shovel thing that really uh, has sort of stayed with me. Uh, to is that now. towards the very beginning? Because yes. I feel like I... Yeah, yeah I know exactly what you're talking stuff. about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty messed up. So. Felt it's almost, almost guilty. Uh, I will say a runner up though, sword. a real yeah. a runner up. I I whenever you first do the uh, uh, become the bullet hell of, of Vampire Survivors and you sit back on the couch and just look at what you're doing and your your character. Yes, just, and you. And I so had you, that last night. You pull your phone out and just take a video for your brother because you can because you're literally just standing there wiping the floor with the world. That's actually a pretty good one too. Um, but yeah, there you go. Nice. All right, Alyssa, last one. I can't say too much about it because it'd be major spoiler, but the ending of a Plague Tale re- re- yeah. Requiem. There we go. All right. I apparently need to finish that one too. So many games I, I have to it. go back and finish. I'm I'm genuinely shocked that Zach has not played that with as much as you love the first one. Well, is... y- you can't you can't play it on my Xbox One, so I have to buy it, and I just it was just a bad time. But I will. Yeah, I want to play that game so badly. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's move on to our 2022 Gaming Outsider Personal Favorites of the Year. This is a this is the culmination of everything. This is a part I'm really looking forward to. Uh, it, just to give you guys an idea of what we do, the the four of us have emailed to Grant our individual top ten uh, personal favorite games of the year. And he has put them all together in a Google spreadsheet and done some number crunching and kind of came up with the top five games based on our votes. And he's going to share those in just a second. Uh, and, I, and then when we're done with that, we are going to uh, see what the listeners had. Well, actually, we're going to hear Grant's personal top five list. And then he's also done the same thing for the listeners. He actually pulled the listeners with a Google form. And uh, com- did kind of the sim- same thing to kind of get the community's overall pick, and then we'll go from there. So, Grant, this is your time to shine, sir. Uh, I think what you'd like to do is give the list of every game that was nominated by the four of us as a start. Is that correct? Yeah, I love to. Re- I have some numbers that are interesting about this this year versus last year. That I'll just read off real quick, and then I'll plot okay. on plot on the. List. I love the numbers. I like that. Yeah, I'm the numbers fun- fan. And then we can, and then I'll just read through the list alphabetically. Um, and then just you guys who want to speak to any of the games we because ha- we haven't come up yet, you know, it's a good time to do that. I'll also mention Kevin also submitted as well, so it's a five head count. Um, oh my bad for the total people submitting points and it was just a top 10 list submitted with you know 10 points for the number one and one point for the for the number 10 so real All quick right. so last year we had 27 total games this is just for you for you guys 27 total games on the list this year we have 36 oh wow. interesting. a lot right. of diversity i'll say this though even so even though there's that many games it's way tighter it's way more contentious uh last year's number one was way more unanimous it's like it really? was, it's interesting so even though we have one more person voting this year, um, the, let's see, the number one game last year got five, uh, well, no, 15 more points than, number, than, than, than the number one this year, believe it or not, okay. even, even with an additional person. So that's total, the t- total number. Um, last year, one places one to five, which is what I'm going to read off. I'll read off the top five. Places one to five were, there was, there was a difference of 24 points. Okay, between number five okay. and number one. This year, okay. places one to five separated by eight points. Just Whoa, eight, holy eight, cow. There's an eight-point <laughs> difference between number one and number five. And one, and one and two separated by one point. Oh, wow. Holy so cow. It's super tight. 
Um, and just to remind That's everyone, exciting. last year's sort of big winner was was Guardians of the Galaxy. That was the big one. Yeah. Yeah. With Halo Infinite followed, and then I can't remember the third one, but it was sort of like fell off really quickly. This is way tight, uh, even with so many games on the list, which I think is interesting. This is exciting, man. I'm I'm <laughs> really stoked it's to wild. see where it's, this it's, goes. Yeah, it's very tight. Uh, also, no games. There were no games that were on all of your lists. There's five of you. Um, and I didn't submit, and I didn't submit to the community one either. I just did mine separate, but... Uh, no games were on all the lists, but two games were on all four of four of the five lists. So, okay, guess later, guess now to yourselves, whatever what games you think those are. But they're, they're just two, two were the most consistent. Um, oh, okay. Uh, between all of you, so I'm just gonna no, run. No, was that no game on all of our lists? No game on that's all your lists. All, yeah. all yeah. five of our lists. No, I know that's just that's interesting. But it was also yeah. the case before Kevin voted. Even Kevin, Kevin submitted last. Oh. So believe it or not, so. Um, guys, we're we're pulling further apart from each other, guys. Yeah, what's happening? No. Right? What's happening? <laughs> Trying to pull this pull this together, holding on to the yeah. Anyway, um, so I'll just read the the names in alphabetical order, and you guys just I'll just go and then feel free to to pipe up if there's something you want to speak right. about. Uh, the first one is, and I did not account for articles. Uh, so the first one is <laughs> a Plague Tale Requiem. Uh, okay, first okay. on the list. Not surprising. As dusk falls, oh. made it on the list. Uh, Bayonetta three did in fact get announced with a date and I come out this past year on list. <laughs> in this list. <laughs> Beacon Pines. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, what is that? The it's game on Xpass. Uh, oh. Xpass Gay Pass. Wonderful, and of course I put yeah. it on there. Yeah, <laughs> okay. there are always right. a number of ones that 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 you know there'll be like ones normally in the lower parts of people's lists yeah. that sort of like yeah. you know onesies twosies that people ended up voting for. Um, Blade Assault is on here. That's got to be a Blade. Kevin. This may have been a Kev. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. the dead silence leads me to believe that it's yeah, Kevin. It's or Kev. yeah. uh, Blast Brigade versus the evil Legion of Dr. Creed is, in fact, on this list, which I'm very happy about. Yeah. Because uh, I right. love that game. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 ah. is on this list. I, I feel like that's me, right? That's got to be a Zach. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that would have been on my list if I had played it. Mm -hmm. I think it would have. Yeah. Uh, Disney's Dreamlight Valley. Uh huh. Alyssa, that that could be that could <laughs> you be CB. Would be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Is it on your CB? It may or may not be. be. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Scott's number one. You don't know. You don't yeah, know. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, Dying Light Two. Yeah, so that's a CB. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a little indie game called Elden Ring. It's on this list. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Evil Dead. The game made it. Oh, wow. CBs Put, putting it through. Good reminder. That I need to play that game. Yeah, um, it's pretty good. Uh, Expedition Rome. It's on here. That's okay. got to be a Kevin. That's a Kevin. Yeah. It's Kevin. <laughs> Unfamiliar. <laughs> Unfamiliar. Random PC game is definitely Kevin. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, I remember I remember putting that on the with, with the new releases. That game looked cool. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that's my big way in. It looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the G. Is God of War Ragnarok on the list? Yeah, Big sure. surprise. Yeah. Gotham Knights is on here. Mm -hmm. you're, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's Zach. Thing. Definitely Zach. <laughs> Horizon Forbidden Forbidden West is on here. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, Zach. I completely forgot about that game. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> too late now. Oh, crap. Dude, I, I I did straight up forget that game came out this year. Yeah. No, no. Before we go on, uh -huh. CB, where would you have like just thinking back to your list? Where would you have placed oh, that if you had remembered god, it? God, I would have probably put that in like the four or five slot. Oh, oh wow. man. Oh well. Oh. How do you forget about Horizon, man? Well, maybe you know. Man plays a lot of games. I, yeah. Whew. Wow. I, okay. I will say when I made my list for games that I played this year, Scott, it was eighty-four. Wow. Jeez. That is a lot. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm writing that down. It's <laughs> uh, he's gonna go back and recalculate it now, aren't you? <laughs> Can we stop the podcast yeah, and come back? No, we're good. <laughs> um. Lego, uh, King Arthur Knight's Tale. I said Lego. It's not Lego King Arthur. Sorry. I jumped ahead <laughs> <in. laughs> that. Lego King Arthur and Knight's Tale. Wow. There's a Lego King Arthur game? Yeah. Lego Star Wars King Arthur game. <laughs> King Arthur and Knight's Tale is a video game. I didn't know that, but it's on the list. That's somewhere. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga on the list. Marvel Snap. Is that the only mobile game? Maybe. Don't know. It's gotta be right. Probably, probably. Well, unless you count vampires. I mean, crossover ones, you know. 
Um, Empire Survivors on Nobody the Saves the World. It's on the list. Yeah. Okay. Opus Echo of Star Song is on the list. Alyssa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Power Wash Simulator, which apparently is an incredible <laughs> ending, is on the list. I can't wait to see the ending of this game. <laughs> Rise of the oh. Third Power is on the list. Oh. oh I know that's going to be a Kevin one, but that, that's one I still have yet to play, but mm. we we interviewed the developer of that oh, JRPG. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm learning a lot about game, uh, Kevin's taste, uh, by the yeah. way. <laughs> um, Rogue Legacy 2 is on here. Yeah, came out early this year. Scott all day. Thought. Great music, I tell you. Great music. Soundtrack sucks. Good music. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Absolutely. Can, I kick, can you make me an admin so I can kick, kick Scott out? Um, uh, Scathe is on here. Scathe. I don't know that one. Kevin. I don't know either. Oh, oh, I remember the Scathe. I think that was the, I remember, that was one that Kevin reviewed. I believe it was like a roguelike-ish third person game i could be wrong okay say so it's funny because i read every review so it's funny that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't remember. uh sifu made the list yeah, oh, yeah. well game is it just me that's the zach yeah. oh that's so sad it's a little game called sonic frontiers is on here mm-hmm. hell yeah stranger of paradise final fantasy origins is on the list no uh, that's, that's a zach, zach. Yeah. <laughs> chaos stray <laughs> stray stray's yeah. on here that that's me. This hasn't come up uh, yet, but the uh, TMNT game, Shredder's Revenge, is on here. Nice. Oh. The Callisto Protocol. Okay. Tunic on the list. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> some higher on some lists than others, I imagine. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Likely. You would, be, you would actually Perhaps. be surprised at where it fell on my list. All right. Well, okay. Uh, Turbo Overkill. Yeah. 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 That's Kevin. All right. I remember him reviewing that one. A little game called Vampire, a little triple A joint called Vampire Survivors is on the list. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! Shout out to that guy. He's got to be a multimillionaire by now, oh, right? That little team of made... European folk for, for a four dollar a game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and to really, yeah, if they're, if they're releasing the game for free on mobile and not even attempting to monetize it, they're doing just fine. You know, <laughs> yeah. which is probably probably a pretty clear sign that they're uh, comfortable. Yeah, they're okay. Right. Uh, Voice of Cards: The Forsaken Maiden is on the list. Zach. Zach. <laughs> no, Scott's number one, actually. Yeah, uh, that, that's totally the 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 near guy, right? The Yoko Taro. Yoko Taro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's another. Yeah. They put out a third one this year too. He put out two in this one year. I did not play the other one. It's too much. That's too much card game. Even for me. We got two more. We are O F K. We are O F K. Is on the list. Oh, okay. And the very last one. What comes after W? Crazy Taxi, X. I mean, Yars Recharged <laughs> is on here. Yars Recharged made the list. It's that's on someone's list. That's Scott. I yeah, Scott. I don't know. I freaking love that game. <laughs> it's that's good. Fun. I love that. I'm such a Yars Revenge junkie. I haven't played it, so I got to do that. Oh, dude, they've, they've just done something really good with that formula to make it feel fresh, but still pay homage to the original. It's cool. That's my it's favorite. In, it's in that Atari game. thing that you've got. Yeah. Oh, uh, not the Recharged. Some other, oh, really? a different, Sean told me it was a different version of Yars Revenge, like a like a, a different version of the same games on there. Yars Recharged is a different ten dollars oh. game. Okay, so, I was, yeah. I maybe I misunderstood. Yeah. I thought Sean told me that was in there. Uh, that's it. That's the whole list. Crazy taxi. Cra- crazy taxi. Exactly. All right, so Grant, you've got the keys right now. Like, how do you want to do this next? You want to just give us five through one, or do you want to give us? I don't know what you've got cooking right now because you've, well, you've had a lot of irons in the fire here. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was just going to start at five and go to one. Uh, and I will tell you, I did uh, have uh, everyone on the podcast guess. Um, the top three. Well, the yeah. top three. Should guess we go the through the guesses first? We can do that. I can go through the guesses, yeah. and then and I won't tell you who is the most accurate. I'll tell you that after I read the list. But I can tell you guys what you think the top of the list is. You want to do that? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do that. All right. So Scott put, and this is, I'm just going to read top like uh, three, two, or three, two, one. Okay. So right. Scott okay. thinks Setting number order. three is God of War. Okay. Two is Vampire Survivors, and one is Sonic Frontiers. That's the Ooh, Scott okay. You're going to hear some consistencies between these two. I think you guys have yeah, a yeah. Zach, very similar, am I right? Sonic Frontiers, three. Mm-hmm. Yes. God of War, two. And you chose Vampire Survivors as being the game of the year. Yeah. I Which did, yeah. Chris B, Vampire Survivors number three. So even though you're not as big of a fan, you're still reading the room, which is nice. That's good. Uh, <laughs> God of War, 
and Elden Ring for number one. Huh. Alyssa, you chose Sonic. It's a s- what? What's that? It's the same one as CB. No, it's not actually. You did, it's not. You did Sonic Sonic Frontiers third. Oh, I thought that Vampire Survivors. You did Sonic. You did Never Sonic mind. Frontiers, Vampire Survivors, and then Elden Ring. Crispy didn't have Sonic on, on his list. Oh, I thought I I'd completely I thought that forgot were on there. that uh, Alyssa didn't play Elden Ring. So. Oh, hmm. whoops. <laughs> I thought I put God of War on that list. Oop, that's my bad. Did, did Kevin, you, make, a, did Kevin make a guess or no? Oh, Kevin guessed as well. Yeah. Kevin said God of War. Horizon. Yeah. Which, oh, well, which let me tell you, if if Chris would have remembered he played the damn thing, <laughs> he, he, Kevin <laughs> might have nailed it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then Elden Ring for number one. That's what, that's what Kevin okay. guessed. Interesting. All right. So I would say before you go to the list, yeah. Grant, I would say that if I could go back, I would actually switch... Um, I would probably have put Vampire Survivors as number one. Well, you, that's because you have so much new information, Scott. Yeah, yeah, so, right. Uh, no, that's yeah. it. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with yeah. it. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm just, yeah, yeah. that's that's probably fair. Okay, here we go. I'm excited. <laughs> I will say that number number four and five are tied. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 So this could go either way, but the two big big budget games this year, Horizon Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok, are actually the bottom of the of the top five, four and wow. five. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, this is this is exciting news for yeah. Sonic. I know, right? <laughs> uh, up by only two points from that is Elden oh my Ring. Gosh. Elden Ring at third third place. So Elden Ring is nice. number three. Number two is Sonic Frontiers. Dude, yeah. you know what that means. The number, I know. The number so, one by one cow. by one point. Vampire Survivors is the game of the year. For- yeah. Get out. <laughs> oh, so, dude, that's... I mean, for, Sonic... <laughs> for a game yeah, that TV. I didn't even put on my list. Yeah. <laughs> that's how much we <laughs> love it. It's true. Not even on... Yeah, not it, was, wow. it, was number, it was number two on my list. It was so, kind of yeah, funny because I remember... I've been listening... Yeah. I listened to the show and I, you know, CB, it was with, you know, Bug and CB to play the game and you know, so funny social media posts about it. And I'm just like, oh my God, even though he didn't even, it didn't even register on his list it's, and it was still high enough on everyone else's that it took actually it, so. already been deleted off my Xbox. No, like, yeah, oh. he, no. Yeah. He wow. Look at him, he's, he's mad. He's no, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually deleted it like two days ago. No, I be- yeah, I believe you're just done with it. Because I'm, no, I, I'm bored. Yeah. I understand. Well, yeah. we're not obviously because it's <laughs> yeah. our game of the year. <laughs> I do love this, like the two, you know, the, I mean, Elden Ring was a, I mean, it wasn't a really surprise, but it still was kind of like, holy crap, that came out of nowhere. But you knew Horizon Forbidden West and God of War were like the big, chonky, AAA, yeah. you know, things. And I, I do love that the other one, like Elden Ring Sonic and this $4 <laughs> game. Who, who would have thought Sonic? What a comeback Talk about story. predictions, I will, you know? I will tell you, though, that if I had remembered about Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah. It probably yeah. would have been a little bit higher. It probably would have. Yeah. But it was you liked it so much you didn't remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because it came out what so early in the year. It did. So it Elden Ring. It did. I know, but yeah, Elden true. Ring dominated so much of the early of the year for me. Yeah. But uh, do you, yeah, Sonic. Uh, Sonic was my game of the year. So. Yeah, I'm happy to see it at number two. Yeah, the number six. I. Just, I oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh. I was going to say, I have to imagine Scott's number one was Vampire Survivors, right? It was, but it was close. Yeah. I I had uh, my number two game was going to be my number one all year long, and I really thought about keeping it there. Um, but I, I, I wound up just, no, you know, I am, because you never know, like, with a game, because I played it so much the last couple weeks, like, at the end of the year, so I didn't know if it was, like, recent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, just sure. because I played it more recently it that I was, it was it. fresh in my mind. Um, but I, you know, as much as I liked my number two, I did I didn't get sucked in as much as I did Vampire Survivors or or put in as many hours or get all the achievements. You know what I mean? I'm guessing like your number two is Rogue Legacy two. No, actually, that was number three. I love your number two. My number two is Blast Brigade. Awesome, Scott. Like you came That's in good. swinging with the indies. You actually put. I'll just just to tell you, like the the, the six through ten, starting at ten, it was Power yeah. Simulator. Rogue Legacy 2, Blast Brigade, Callisto wow. Protocol, and then Plague Tale. So, hey, see, we got Callisto on the you list. You did get though. Callisto on the huh? list, uh, yeah. but you just came in swinging with these high numbers for indies, and that you're the one that kind of, sort of like those are two of yours just made it in the top ten because of that, because you voted them so high. But yeah, but I'm with you on the Blast Brigade, man. 
Scott Clark, a tastemaker. See, it's it it it's just seriously an underrated game. I'm I'm not saying Vampire Survivors is a bad game, but to me, like I'm just done not with for it. you. I don't really ever want to think about it again. Yeah. Well, you're gonna have to <laughs> next year when we talk about how it was our game of the year, <laughs> yeah. 2022. <laughs> Man, it's so funny. I I, I am guess. still shocked that 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 actually was our game of the year. And I'm just saying, I'm not, and by one that, point, I'm by one point to Sonic, That's, I'm just like the whole, the whole, awesome? the whole clump at the top uh, is really odd. You know, odd thing. you know, for as much crap as CB loves to give us all year long, it's kind of nice that the top two games were stuff he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, yeah, I, because yeah, you know what? Same. I, I like my list. Yeah, I'll tell you if you I, yeah. if you to put. You, well, I hope you do. Yeah, if you. I mean, you may you, <laughs> you may have shaken things up a little bit with Horizon, but as it sits, oh, the I game doesn't really exist to you. I would be really curious to see so. how that would change. What that would have changed. That would have. Dropped I feel evil, like that would have put. It would have dropped Evil Dead off my list. Would it? And I bet that would have put Horizon on number at number three. I would have to Probably. guess. Probably not have knocked off Sonic. If only eight points separate top from bottom, and I put it at number six. Oh, that's a good point. Well, where would you put yeah. it, Chris? Where would you where would you put it above? I I power would wash put it. Is this? Is this? Fu- is I would have put it. I would have put it between power wash and plague tail. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. The 2022 Gaming Outsider Game of the Year. Wait, hold on. Still- Who is? So who's guess? Who's number top three guesses were close? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. the way I did this was I assigned. Uh, I got you. I gave you a point if you got one of the games correct, right? Like if it's okay. if it is a part of the top three, you get a point. If you if you pick the right spot, you get an additional point. Okay, feel me. And the yeah, two winners gotcha. were Zach and Alyssa. Uh, nice. Alyssa, yes! Alyssa, yeah. Alyssa, you got all three games. You just got them completely out of order. Yeah. Uh, and, and then Zach <laughs> came in swinging with Vamp Survivors. He had the he was he was feeling good about he's not been able to put I it knew. down and he's like it's all I can think about. And then he so he got an extra yeah. point there. So. Every time every time I open my phone, I accidentally type Vampire Survivors. Yeah. So I imagine <laughs> your phone just like name. pulls it up on the yeah. suggested. That's thing. actually my my passcode. I change it to Vampire Survivor. <laughs> he scans his card at the gas station. It's like Vampire Survivor. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah, uh, Vampire Survivors, the 2022 Gaming Outsider Game of the Year. Before we get to our listeners' picks, Grant, thank you so much for doing all this work, man. Oh, uh, we so really fun. appreciate you doing this. I, I genuinely look forward to this. But what are your top five personal games of the year? Mine, I played a lot more indie stuff than I did big, big budget stuff this year, um, flying through Game Pass and other stuff. But my my number five was Arcade Paradise. Chris, ah, solid. Yeah. yeah. Love Arcade Paradise. Sorry, to, I just took a video on the Xbox of my final arcade layout before I finally like closed the game, put it away. Um, but I loved that game. I probably I thought I would get bored of washing clothes, but I didn't for some reason. Um, but great game. Atari Fifty was number four for me. Nice. Uh, Blast Brigade was number three. Uh, I still love that game. Oh, nice. I I got every single collectible before I went in the final boss room. I was like, I, I have to, I have to clean this up so it is seriously underrated i like nobody is talking about that game yep. like at all and the soundtrack's like, great I think you, too, you so. me and um and jeff from nindy nation mm. are the only ones that like even know that game exists i feel like yeah it didn't it didn't make any sort of splash which is too bad but no um vamp survivors for number two nice uh and for, yeah. for me my favorite game of the year no one said this entire episode uh, and i don't know if you guys have played it but have you played tinykin no. no, no. Have you heard of it? I've is heard the, of it. Is that the um? Oh, it's like the the Pikmin is it Pikmin like a Pikmin kind of game. Yes, it's yeah. a Game Pass game. It is a game. It's most similar to Pikmin, but um, it's basically you that you're this tiny flat character with your your arsenal of little beings, and you're traveling around these familiar environments, but you're really tiny, uh, and you tr- you travel around at high speeds on a bar of soap, and you're it's basically like uh distilled exploration it's all about breadcrumbs and and collecting everything in the levels and it's just awesome there's no fail state there's no combat it's just hardcore exploration with these crazy little creatures and i just loved it i was just like this is like my favorite kind of game and it was a total joy and i I, it's not very long it's about five hours um but it's it man it's probably recency bias there i played it like november december but i just the most fun i've had all year Playing a game. 
I remember you talking so, about that one earlier in the year, and I did, and I failed to check it out. So I'm gonna have to add that to my list. It's great, and it's on Game nice. Pass. So awesome. Well, Grant, I know we got one more thing to do in terms of awards, and that is our community top five games of the year. Uh, did you do this the same way that you did ours, or did you have a little bit of different math going on? What did you do here? Pretty much the same thing. There were 14 submissions, um, and you, uh, what did I say, 37 games, I think, for you guys? Right. We had 65 games between the 14 okay. people. Wow. Um, not everyone filled out 10. I just required five because we're just doing a list mm -hmm. of five. Um, so didn't even get to, crit, to, to Chris's uh, 84 or whatever, but... Uh, <laughs> 65 different games, and I'll just read those five to one. So same same points and everything. Bit of a different yeah. list. Oh yeah, I, was, I, was, I bet Sonic will not be number two. Sonic is not in the top five, actually. Yeah, uh -huh. that that makes sense to me. Believe it or not, uh, number five, Lego Star Wars, Skywalker Saga. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Number four, Forbidden uh, Forbidden Horizon West. That's number four. <laughs> uh, number three, number three, Plague Tale Requiem. Really? Oh yeah! Ooh, people love yeah. it. Like, I really got to play that people game. People really like that it's game. Really good, Zach. I believe it. Looks very much like a game I would love. Number two, beating Plague Tale by one point. Vampire Survivors. Nice. How dare Thank they? You, I know. Number two. And then how could they do this? What do you think? Thank what's, you, community, for making me feel better. What's your guess for number one? What do you think? Elden, Elden Ring. Ring. That's it. Elden, Elden Ring. Ring. Elden. Yeah. Crazy yeah. Taxi. Oh yeah, that'd be. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great dark horse? They put that on there. It's a write-in. Everyone wrote it in. <laughs> yeah, Funny, I had control of the of the sheet. Who knew? Everyone <laughs> would write in crazy the form and made sure. <laughs> so that's it. Well, that was fun. We got one other thing to talk about before we get out of here, and that is our most anticipated games for 2023. Uh, <clears throat> CB, let's start with you. What are you looking forward to the most in the next 12 months? Do you even need to ask? Uh, I I have a. No, actually, I don't. I don't. Yeah, it's you the, should know. Yeah, Starfield. Star. Starfield. Ah, yeah. Starfield. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why, but if somebody says like Hellblade Two, mm. where but, is that game? I know. Where is it? <laughs> I hope it comes out this year and gets some nominations at the Game I Awards. That would be nice. Comes out one yeah. day, any it, day at all. There's no way it's not going to come out. Is that the only one you had, CB? Oh, I, yeah. oh, it's mostly anticipated games. Uh, well. Yeah, Starfield. Yeah, yeah, more Starfield. So it's just <laughs> all the Starfield. <laughs> all the Starfields. I hope that game is good. Alyssa, how about you? I've got a few. Um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I yeah. love Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. Um, the Dead Space remake. I just want to revisit that. Yeah, that's um, on my list. Resident Evil Four remake because I've never gotten to play Resident Evil Four. Oh my god. Um. Final Fantasy 16, Spider Man 2, Alan Wake 2, and The Wolf Among Us 2. Those are nice. my most anticipated. I keep forgetting that A Wolf Among Us 2 is actually happening. Yeah. It's one of those, like, is it really? Like, <laughs> it's slated it. for this year. It could be moved, but anything's going to happen. That's kind of how I feel about Spider Man 2. I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't feel like it's real yet. Well, we haven't seen anything. <laughs> like, yeah. We just. Yeah, who knows? Uh, for me, Dead Space was on my list as well, but I put Diablo 4. Mm. Uh, Diablo 3 was a game that I put countless hours. Uh, I feel like that's going to be my Friday night game with my group and or whoever else wants to play with me. And thirdly, I put Sea of Stars, which is a game that I actually kickstarted that is supposed to be coming out this year. It looks outstanding. JRPG. It does. Uh, looks, looks great. Really good. So, um, And our name's going to be in the in the... In the game somewhere, we we did a level where like you get to design a headstone or whatever and put your name on it. So oh, we put cool. the go cast. So the go cast oh, will cool. be somewhere in Sea of Stars, allegedly. Be a, nice. A uh, decrepit you know. cords, cor uh, corpse somewhere. Yeah, something like that. So those were my <laughs> picks for most anticipated. Grant, how about you? Uh, I also put Dead Space. I think it'll be interesting after um, Callisto. So sort of divisive. Uh, at first, I thought Callisto may kill it, and then Dead Space will come around, and people will be like, "Why would they bother?" I don't know. I feel like people are kind of craving Dead Space right now. So I'll be interested yep. to see mm -hmm. if it comes out really good marks. It's a little expensive, but I feel like to have that experience again, high res, surround sound, you know, I feel like it'd be worth, it might be worth picking up. We'll see. Um, I was looking at gameplay of that because I'm one of the ones that said, you know what? The old, the original still holds up and looks fine. Yeah. And then I saw the trailer for this. I was like, 
oh my god, I can't wait just to go through looks, this again. Looks pretty sick. But we did we did agree that the footage they were using for original Dead Space did not look like it doesn't look like the Xbox back compat version. Correct. It looks like it a looks like yeah. gro- little, little on a three sixty greasier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, probably they probably they probably uh, captured it on SD footage somehow. Yeah, just yeah right. Off. Yeah, pull you know? off VHS just to you know really <laughs> yeah, drive the point home. Scan lines. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, I put replaced on here, uh, which is a looks like sort of a dystopian pixel art looking game. Don't know what it is. They had another trailer at Game Awards, but it, I think it's the most, um, uh, one of the most captivating looking pixel art games I've ever seen. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know why it looks like the way it does, but it just looks really cool. So replaced is on the list, and then Zelda. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. Yep, or Tears of the Kingdom, whichever. It is. Ooh, I think it's another. That might be another case of. Uh, I don't. I don't know how excited to feel because I'm not totally sure it's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that supposed to come out in May? Yeah. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. Like it's January. We haven't seen any gameplay. Well, no, we've seen gameplay, just very well, small amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different little vignettes. I mean, not that they need gameplay to sell that game. It just it's going to be fine. But, yeah, I'm sure it'll be excellent. To, uh, yeah, of course. So, all right, and lastly, Zach, what are you looking most forward to? Well, I got, I got, I have my fingers crossed that uh, this way, Madness Lies gets ported off of computer and onto like Switch or something, which is a, which is an indie JRPG where you play uh, magical, your magical girls, so you like transform Sailor Moon style. Oh, that when sounds you go so to cool. Uh, but it's, but it's this beautiful pixel art it's from the people who make uh, Cthulhu Saves the World and stuff. Mm, yeah. And it's it's out on PC, but but I'm hoping it gets somewhere else. So that's kind of just a fingers crossed choice. But otherwise, Alan Wake two, definitely on my list. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, I am chomping at the bit for. But uh, but easily the game I'm most excited about is Suicide Squad: Kill the Justice League. Looks pretty oh, cool. I forgot to put that one on my list. Looks pretty cool. I just <laughs> you know I love DC as as I uh, uses my Gotham Knights review. I love. DC more than uh, family and friends, you know. It's just that's uh, true. Can't, <laughs> have we seen any wait. actual gameplay footage from that yet? Yeah, well, there was one gameplay trailer, but we have we haven't seen uncut footage now. Okay, right. We haven't just we haven't seen like a thirty minute slice. Oh, you know what? Wanted Dead comes out on Valentine's Day, dude. I can't wait for this game. It's calling itself a AAA love letter to the sixth generation of video game consoles, so it is intentionally trying to be a PS2 or an Xbox game. Dude, I can't wait. This game looks awesome good as hell it's got like an adult swim energy because it's like cutting to these wacky live action commercials as well during the game mm. i don't know man it looks great cool shout out to wanted dead i like but it. suicide squad is where my heart's at i like it well that is it guys our 2022 favorite games of the year discussion is officially closed let us know out there if you agree or disagree with our choices you can email us at feedback at the gaming or on our facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the go cast don't forget we also have a discord server and the link is in the show notes for this episode uh before we leave i want to say a huge thank you to mr kevin honigford who is uh has the unfortunate task of editing this episode this monster of an episode um you know with with five of us on here at once so thank you so much for doing that kevin grant thank you for being here man it is a pleasure to talk to you every all the time but i especially love that you still do this tradition with us each year. It's a blast. Oh, super fun for me. Glad to do it. Awesome. And where can everybody follow you? Want to give them uh, give them some some uh, places they can see you? Um, Stemage on the socials, uh, and that's all. Search for that. That's pretty <laughs> SEO friendly. I am excited because we're at Metroid Metal is actually playing our first show in a while at Magfest this weekend, and I'm hoping that after the show is um, archived, I'm going to get stems and video footage and be able to cut together a really good quality live show archive of that. So if I, if I get that Can't. done, I'll, I'll post it to the community. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Can't wait to see it. Uh, Zach, Chris, and Alyssa, as always, thank you guys so much for uh, sticking around for however many years we've been doing this now. Um, love you guys. Love that you guys are uh, um, still still with me. <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, love you guys very much. So um, I guess that's it. I don't have much more to say. I want to remind everybody as we head into 2023, remember, there's no such thing as a bad game. Just games that aren't for you. Yeah.